Behold, a tome so full of righteous fury of the Emperor. Today, on Review Rollout, we're talking about Codex Adeptus Sororitas. Let's get into it. Anvil of War! Review Rollout! Hey guys, and welcome back to Anvil of War Gaming. On today's show, we are reviewing... Codex Adeptus Sororitas, courtesy of our sponsors over at Red Dragon. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel, you can do so by supporting them. Check out their web store. There's a link in the video description below. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for sending us over a copy of Adeptus Sororitas so that we can review it here on the channel. Now, uh, admittedly, I am not the most knowledgeable Adeptus Sororitas player. So uh, we drafted some assistants and friend of the channel, Josh, will be joining me on the table uh, to go through all of this in its glory. I'm gonna do a deep dive into the codex. So without further ado, let's hit the table. And here we are, Adeptus Sororitas in all its glory. So I'm joined here with Josh, a day, friend day, day. of the channel. You may have remember him from such videos as the Space Wolves versus Drukari. The they wouldn't have remembered that. Ken deleted it. <laughs> Burn at Ken there for dig at Ken. But uh, anyways, uh, we're gonna get past that, <laughs> despite uh, despite the uh, the harsh feelings. <laughs> and uh, move on to the beautiful, beautiful codex we have in front of us here today. So, um, full disclosure, I know very little about this book, so I'm coming from the perspective of somebody who has um, not played many games as far as against or with, or I just have very little understanding other than from what I know from tournament lists that uh, were in circulation and uh, were abusing things, we'll say. Yeah, well, you can talk to Brett about yeah. what they what they're <laughs> capable of. Yeah, there was a lot of abuse in the uh, the previous book with uh, just specific units, and we see that pretty much flushed out. Um, and a lot of those units got kind of kicked in the pants a little bit. A little bit. Pendulum swung pretty hard. Yeah, but it but it was all in the favor of balance and all in the favor of seeing a diversity of lists, which is what we're seeing a lot of the times with the new codexes, especially the recent ones that are being released. Um, so we're going to get into this. We're going to dive in. We're not going to try to make this a three-hour video, but uh, no promises, guys. Um, when we're flipping through, first off, we got the cover art here. I do like the cover art. She looks... Yeah, there's it, it's Scary. great from a model and an art point of view. They're they're women, they're nuns, but they're not effeminate. They're there to do a job. Mm. They're there fighting the holy wars of the ecclesiarchy, and they look it. Yeah, they're not uh, they're not all uh, sexualized. Yeah, exactly. They they did a good job of making them very uh, intimidating to the models. Um, yeah, now we're moving into the Imperial Creed. That's a cool statue. The living What's, saint. Yeah. Actually, I've been wondering what those dragons are, what or they what they're represent. supposed to represent. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, comment in the video below. Let us know what that means. Um, and then we get into... So this is the matriarch. So why don't you run us through what this is? Right, so what you're seeing here on the screen is actually probably my favorite work of art in the whole picture. It's very classical in its actual art history and, and where they, they drew it, but what you're looking at is the original matriarchs, the original brides of the emperor, depicted in, in, in art form. Of course, now on the tabletop, you see them represented as um, the triumph of, of St. Catherine. And each each uh, matriarch is represented by a model in the pr funeral procession. Hmm. Very cool. I love the stained glass approach. You know, they, they obviously, you were mentioning to me earlier, but the, uh, the, the heavy influence to... Uh, Catholicism and like oh, it's it's everywhere from our stained glass immolator tanks right through the books. Yeah, yeah it's it's really and beautiful. that's something that we see throughout different armies. I mean, Admech we have the Roman legions and uh, just the, where they draw their names from and everything. So it's kind of cool to see the cultural influences. I mean, we're not going to say they're Christians. These guys aren't Christians. No, that's heresy. Um, but well, uh, yeah, they're for the emperor. Yeah. So one thing I will say about uh, all of the codexes, past, uh, present, and most likely future, is that they always have these great little short stories in there. 
good thing to read pre-painting, pre-assembling your models, give you a little bit of a, a hobby jolt to, to get the uh, the creative juices going. And um, I love the immersion of the little short stories that you find in these books. Yeah, and this one's great because previously, at least for me, when the Triumph of St. Catherine was released, no one really knew what it was other than a funeral procession. And this particular story really gets you into the, the framework and mentality of, of what these sisters undergo and what they represent to, to themselves and the order. Hmm. Very cool. And the artwork, I oh my god, they're just hitting it out of the park with this new art and all the codexes here. All right, and then we have the uh, the hierarchy of the Adeptus Sororities. It's not complicated. No, it's, uh, I mean, Big Papa Emperor up top. Yep. And then, uh, yeah. Like, can, really, you can just do away with the rest of it. It's him and then everyone else. And then, and then everyone else. <laughs> as far as they're concerned. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Cool to see that, though. Now, Morvan Vall. The so, elephant in the room. The elephant in the room. Um, we'll talk about this, obviously, when we get to her data sheet, but um, there's some some backstory to her. I mean, she is a High Lord of Terra, so brand she new should be brand new in the in game's term. In, in game's term. Yeah. I mean, I she, mean, she didn't exist in the previous. Book. I'm excited to see what this does for potential um, Astro Militarum characters, maybe. Oh, yeah. And seeing some, um, some High Lords represented in other ways on the tabletop in other factions. So. Well, you're seeing a lot of, uh, not just High Lords, but every faction seems to be getting some major heavy hitter. One big big baddie, yeah. Uh, the Drukhari kind of got a bit of a miss there. They really just got Drazar and, and Lilith back. Drazar's pretty... Oh, he's amazing. He's poor. But he's not, say, Vect. Yeah, but he is, I would consider him like an Aspect. He's basically a... He's, he's not a Phoenix Lord. Phoenix Lord. No. He's a Phoenix. Lord. He's a Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. All right, and we've got Wars of the Faith, so just some more lore, and then we get into the uh, specific uh, characters and units within. Um, they're doing this. This is continued to so the War War Zone, Varentia, and uh, what we've seen in every single codex so far is that they have just do a depiction or or a, a small uh, story and. Uh, chunk of lore on all the different war zones. So it's just something uh, cool if you're looking at uh, building on a campaign or... Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to see... I mean, There's some great crusade rules in yeah. here. You want to be a saint? You can be a saint. Let's, let's be saints. The Order is militant. So again, just some more lore. So this would be the six or holy orders, holy the orders, originals yeah. that are patterned after the matriarchs that we mentioned before. So Martyred Lady, Valor's Heart, just lore on each one, Bloody Rose, Evan Chalice, my fave, your fave, Heart and Stroud, who have changed a little bit. Yeah, they've actually changed a lot. We'll get into that. Yeah. And Sacred Rose. And then the Orders Minoris, so this is uh, sort of uh, just some lore and history on some uh, lesser known orders that uh, you may want to portray um, by choosing some rules in the rule section when we get to it. But And also to note there, um, they say in the lore, it doesn't matter unlike a Space Marine chapter where they would have another founding and they're, they're completely autonomous, mm. these Orders Minoris fall under the actual orders majoris. So they're in a ranking system. If you are from, say, uh, the Ebon Chalice. Uh, glowing Chalice? Or, or the Glowing yeah. Chalice, you fall under in the hierarchy of whoever your majoris order is. And here it's... Uh, Ebon Chalice, yeah. Ebon Chalice, so yeah. That, ma that makes sense. Very cool. And again, just the depictions of these ladies, I mean... They're, uh, yeah, they don't mess around. No, they look like they look like they don't mess around at all. Non-militant orders, and then so it just talks about the um, hospitaller, dialogists. And again, what's different between uh, yeah, a lot of people draw conclusions between Space Marines and and Battle Sisters under the new rule set, but in terms of, of lore, they're they're vastly different. Are uh, other orders there, the Hospitaliers, the Dialogists, they serve throughout the Imperium. Right. So a Hospitalier can be patching up uh, Imperial Guardsmen in, in a Crusade world somewhere. It's not just sisters that they're, they yeah. look after in the lore. 
Very cool. So they're much more embedded and less autonomous. I was about to say they're all throughout yeah. Imperium and all the Imperial worlds. Including politics, actually. There's some pretty interesting background about uh, oh, yeah. how the, the Ecclesiarchy affects politics. Hmm. And now we have some this kind of interesting artwork here. I love it. And we're getting into some models here. So we're talking about all the different orders and how they're depicted in uh, their color schemes on the tabletop. Vestments of purity. Yeah, these models, uh, I thought when I started the sisters, I would get some of the old classic models. Uh, but for me, they just they don't really hold up at all in terms of scale, detail, and and basically what they bring to yeah. bring to the table. Well, the stuff that GW is doing with their their molds and uh, with the uh, the sculpts now is just unreal. Like it's anything. Every time they put out something new, I just got the Lord Croak. Speaking of the Age of Sigmar, but I got uh, the Lord Croak the other day, and I just like I was just stunned. And these sisters' kits, especially even the new ones. I mean. Val is just unreal. Just yeah, such, a, such a beautiful miniature. And speaking of, we're getting into the, some of the newer stuff, so the Paragon War suits that were just recently released. And here we have the, is it Sacrosant? Uh, yeah, the Celestian Sacrosants. Sacrosants. Kind of like cool. the Swiss Guard. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. The Triumph of St. Catherine. One of the most beautiful models it's a beautiful model it's super weird to me to see like any of those models where there's just a ton of stuff going on on the one base have always been like terrifying to me from a painting well, as for a confession position. time mine's still in the box yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just gotta like pull the trigger one day and just do it you know but uh beautiful model and uh, the Castigor. So uh, somebody changed their opinion on this real quick. So there's there's two parts to my opinion on this. I don't like the idea of getting Space Marine hand-me-downs. <laughs> uh, but, you know, from a rule set, and we'll, again, we'll get into how they've balanced this book uh, a more, this tank now has a, a solid rule. Yeah. Classic emulator. That stained glass just terrified me to paint. <laughs> this is a wicked battle scene here. You got fighting the heretics. You can just feel the faith bleed off of this army. Yeah, it's just it's impressive to see all of the different um, the entire uh, collection that they have painted up here, just all on the table on one table, you know, with all of the characters and everything. You know, just unreal. There she is in the thick of it. In the background, too. We even have, uh, what's her name? Uh, Stern. Stern. She's yeah. great now. Yeah. And now we're moving into the rules section, so getting into the uh, the real stuff. So uh, here's a combat patrol. Um, so this is the combat patrol box. We we think. we don't. It hasn't been released yet. It hasn't really been released yet. So, I mean, every single codex so far has had their combat patrol box pictured yes, I mean, be a box in an actual collection so so what's interesting to to mention here is if you bought the original when they re-released the sisters and you bought that or uh, that big set of which yeah. i bought two yeah um uh, all of this is the contents including the special canon s that is only available in that box okay but the rhino is brand new interesting it's interesting because um that box was 200 some odd Canadian dollars without the Rhino, and it came with a codex. I don't know what the... Uh, so the codex is valued at about... Yeah, okay. This is interesting. So it's, it's amazing value, and there's a great spread of units in this book. Or so in, we'll, ha we'll have to wait and see if it actually... If it comes to fruition and that ends up being it, but... Anyways, would that be a good starter armory, army, in your opinion? It was for me. Yeah? <laughs> I yeah. bought two of them, and it's... Good way to get into collecting them? It's uh, right where I got in there. And then we move from that into detachment abilities. Now, um, let's do a quick little breakdown of um, th sort of these two specific rules, the decree passive and the order conviction. So decree passive, run me through roughly what that means. So the decree passive basically dictates, just as in the lore, that there can't be any more um, uh, cult imperial priests uh, in a detachment than there are Adeptus Sororitas character units. Right. So you're always going to have more Adeptus Sororitas units. 
and you can only include one, a maximum of one canonist and one missionary, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting. And Val is not a canonist. She's an abbess. Yes. She, she ranks above uh, everyone. She's, so it's interesting that she doesn't factor in. I wonder if that was an oversight or if we're going to see, uh, some, some interesting list building coming out of yeah. that. On the, the internet groups in the world, um, she's basically been dubbed the uh, Sister Gulliman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's nasty. Well, again, when we get to that data sheet, we'll uh, continue to talk about how ridiculous she is and why you're going to buy her. Um, moving on to order convictions. So now we're talking about um, basically just the the understanding that you're you're going to gain order convictions from your orders if every unit or model in that detachment, with the exception of obviously a few um, that are named, but if they're all from the sisters Adeptus Sororitas and from that order. Yep, basically. and that, that's pretty standard for a lot of yeah, a lot of yeah. books. And the order's militant. Yeah, it just talks about the Warlord trait, stratagems, relics, everything that you're going to unlock. And then we get into the orders. So starting off with none other than the order of our Martyred Lady. So when we're talking about this one, first of all, their, their main rule set is going to be at the end of the, any phase, uh, other than the morale phase, in which any units of the, with this conviction are destroyed, you gain one Miracle Dice. This is in addition to the Miracle Dice gained at the end of the phase. Um in which a character with this conviction is destroyed. <laughs> okay. Each time an attack is made by a model with this conviction, if uh, the unit is below starting strength, add one to the attack's hit roll. Right. right. So what are, what are our thoughts on this? I mean, that sounds like a good way to start bumping up your miracle dice. Right. So as I was saying to you earlier, a core component of this book in the, in the lore and on the tabletop, GW has done a really good job of, of translating this over, is the idea of faith and acts of faith. Okay. For the sisters in the lore, uh, a bolt gun shell flying through the enemy lines, missing everyone and detonating a tank's fuel cell, that's not skill or luck. That's literally the emperor saying, this is going to happen. And they just accept that and move on. Mm. On the tabletop you get to take on that role and affect your army with use of Miracle Dice. It's a key component to how this army functions. And the Order of Our Murdered Lady is one of the orders that lets you just churn these Miracle Dice mm. out. It really favors MSU style, where you're going to be taking casualties to improve the overall effectiveness of your army there. Right. And as you as you suffer casualties, you you get stronger. Become, yeah, your army becomes more potent. All right, and then we've got uh, the honor of the martyrs for one command point. This is their stratagem. Use this stratagem at the end of the phase in which an order of martyred our martyred lady character model from your army was destroyed by an enemy unit. Uh, and this is excluding models that were destroyed and subsequently returned to the battlefield. Spoiler alert: uh, that phase due to any rules. Um, until the end of the battle, each time an order our martyred lady, martyred lady, oh, I'm going to have a struggle with that one, uh, models make uh, makes an attack against that enemy unit, add one to the attack's wound roll. Yeah. So that's pretty strong. It's kind of situational, though. Like, it's kind of, you got to be, it's yeah. going to pop off kind of thing, but it's, it's interesting. Warlord trait, shield bearer. Uh, each time an attack is allocated, this warlord subtract one from the damage characteristic of that attack to a minimum of one. Each time you gain miracle dice at the end of the phase as a result of vengeance, if this warlord destroyed any enemy units during that phase, the miracle dice is automatically a six. Pretty strong. And each time you gain a miracle dice at the end of the phase as a result of sacrifice, uh, or if this warlord, warlord was destroyed during that phase, the Miracle Dice is automatically sick. So again, that just leans into what you were saying. Yeah. They're very much, um, they lean towards self-sacrifice and th they pump up your army as you uh, as you reduce the amount of units you have. Yeah. There, there are, you can build a canonist, and we'll see later, that's a great cheerleader that's sitting in the back. But as you'll see as the army progresses and, and we go through the rules, this is not a sit-back army you at all anymore. Yeah. You want that mid-board. You want to be right in there. And they have the tools and range to really maximize their effectiveness there. 
And this is one of those orders that really just hammers down on a key fundamental aspect of the sisters with those that miracle dice generation, ensuring that even though you're in that mid-board, you're in that danger zone, your damage is just horrific. Right. Your output. Which plays into the the addition a little bit too because the addition is very it's not a sit back and shoot gun line style sorry tau yeah no it's 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 really it favors units jumping up and taking objectives you need to do that to win games now so um now moving on to warlord trait or sorry we already talked about that relics uh, this is a great little relic yeah martyr's vengeance so this is a model equipped with a, a infernal pistol only this relic replaces the infernal pistol and has the following rules range 12 inches pistol one strength nine ap minus four d6 damage plus three and there's no half range bonus there. no it it's just, just d6 plus three period that's a that's a scary pistol yeah it's a great little toss it especially when you're looking at the ballistic skills of your characters that will be toting this so um yeah great little toss in i mean if you have an extra relic or you want to spend a command point and take an extra relic that might be something to look at well one of the things you can think of as well with the, the the shield bearer warlord trait that miracle dice generation yeah you know toss a six miracle dice on that gun your uh, a pistol just put out nine points of damage boom just like that pretty scary um and then we go on to the order of valorous heart of the valorous heart so each time a model with this uh conviction would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound roll a d6 on a five plus that wound is not lost each time an attack is allocated to a model with this conviction if that attack has an arm penetration characteristic of minus one or minus two the arm penetra penetration character is reduced by one so this is obviously changed from the previous edition yeah this is one of the major changes that people were crying about yeah um they shouldn't be. That's still that's some really it's good still rules. Good, yeah. You're still uh, reducing the AP of incoming well, fire. I mean, the five plus mortal wound shrug against is against a lot of armies. Well, mortal I mean, wound we've output got is Green getting Knights and uh, thousand and thousand suns on the horizon too. So we know that they. Well, your uh, admech put out a lot of mortal wounds they too. They do. Right? Yeah. No. Th there's ways of stacking it for a lot of armies now. So um, having that little uh, ability, and it's not in just in the psychic phase. So that's something to uh, to note. So yeah, these guys, uh, they've definitely been knocked down a peg, but not really. They're just... They've they're been just, altered. So They're just not that auto-include anymore. Uh, I don't know about auto-include so much. There's more variety. There's more choice. And even just looking at this page, Martyred Ladies, a great order to go after. Mm. Valorous Heart is great if you want just to build that tanky castle. That, that's how you're going to do it, is yeah. with Valorous Heart. Uh, in the previous edition, it was a straight six-up, feel no pain. Right. I would prefer the five up, feel no pain, the mortal wounds, uh, just for my regular opponents and the amount that they can put out. Right. Um, one command point for blind faith. So this is their stratagem. Use this stratagem in the shooting phase. When uh, the order of the Valorous Heart unit from your army is selected to shoot or in the fight phase, when an order of Valorous Heart unit from your army is selected to fight. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, you can ignore any and all hit roll, ballistic skill, and weapon skill modifiers. Pretty solid. Those are pretty prominent across the board now. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, my other army, my other competitive army is Harlequins, and they, they love their minus one to hit. It's yeah. literally how they survive and get across the board. It's almost a game of like, okay, minus one. Okay, I'm ignoring that. Yeah. Uh, or plus one. Okay, minus two now. Yeah. Because okay, you can only ever get that minus well, one, so take, it's a game yeah, back and forth. This takes bit. that. Yeah. Completely away. Well, I found that Admech really lost a lot of that, their abilities to add plus ones, and now it's just plus ballistic skill. Yeah. So... It's interesting to see that, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, and then their Warlord trait, Impervious to Pain. So each time a Warlord performs an act of faith, um, it regains one lost wound. And each time this Warlord l would lose a wound, roll a d6, and on a 5+, plus, that wound is not lost. So that, that's actually a very lore-based decision. Um, their matriarch was Dominicia, who was martyred through torture. So oh, okay. these guys are all about uh, pain, allowing them to get closer to their matriarch and a closer and closer to holiness. Yeah. Hmm. There's nothing chaos about that. <laughs> I was gonna say, sounds like there's, there's nothing. Sounds chaos like somebody's worshiping Slide Ash, but okay. Um, we'll we'll look past that. And just move on. Uh, relics. Uh, so they have the casket of penance. So. Um, 
The bearer has the following ability, Cascade of Penance Aura. While an enemy unit is within three inches of the bearer, subtract one from the toughness characteristic, interesting, of malls in that enemy unit. Um, if that unit has the chaos keyword, subtract one from the strength characteristic as well. Hmm. Interesting. They almost did that. that that's a cover-up. That's them saying we're not worshipping Slanesh. Pretty much, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, you, you, <laughs> as you go through the rules, if... Uh you're into this type of gameplay as I am, the, the kind of thematic side of Psyker's bad, Mutant's bad, Heretic's bad, Yeah, this is a book you need to pick up. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of their... Uh, it's our shtick. That's your shtick. All right, and then we get into the Bloody Rose. Now this is uh, very melee focused. Yep. Very, very melee focused. Um, each time a unit with this conviction fights, uh, if it made a charge move, was charged, pro performed a heroic inter intervention. Fancy way of basically saying first round of combat. Yeah, we got shock assault. Yeah. Um, then they're getting plus one attack. They got shock assault. And then each time model with this conviction, again, makes it attack or makes a charge, is charged, heroically intervenes. Um, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one as well. So this is, is this is the major change with this order that, again, people are Bemoaning. It's okay. not a huge change, but it is a change. In the previous book, that included your pistols. Right. Which is why you saw... Which is why you saw these guys everywhere. Seraphim. Yeah. Uh, everything. So just out of nowhere, they would have a strength four, which is stronger than the sisters are themselves. Neg one attack coming in. Mm. It's good to see that they kind of changed a little bit, but... It's obviously, if you're going very melee-focused list, this is the one you want to look at. Oh, yeah. That, that'll that stack on top of Sisters Repentia, for example. And it doesn't end there, because then we have the Tear Them Down stratagem for one command point. Um, use it in the fight phase, and until... Or a unit from your army is selected to fight. One unit is selected to fight, sorry. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically wounds the target. So this is also an adjustment... But I actually don't think this is a bad adjustment. I don't think this is a nerf, so mm -hmm. to speak. The previous rule was plus one to wound. It didn't guarantee that you were getting wounds. It just said you got an extra chance to wound. So it helped certain units take on things above their weight. But now even small sister squads stand a decent chance of getting those. I was going to say something with a low strength but high volume of attacks. That's what you're targeting with yeah. this. Because, um, yeah, low, low strength swinging, but high volume, you're going to end up getting the ability to wound some stuff that maybe before you couldn't. Yeah, for example, uh, Xerophim, as a unit, are only strength four with their power swords. Right. But they can come in with Bloody Rose with three attacks each. Boom. Well, and then on top of that, I mean, it's nice to be able to threaten something that you normally couldn't because you can catch the opponent off guard. And it's only one command point, so, I mean, it's, it's definitely Every worth round. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I find that for most of the um, stratagems for the specific sub-factions, most of them are like, you're going to be using this pretty much every round of the game. Um, or, or if you can. Now we're moving on to the Warlord trait. So add one to the tax characteristic of this Warlord, and this Warlord is eligible to charge in turn in which advanced. So so that's, a, that's classic. It's great. Uh Righteous Rage, I think is what the other Warlord trait is called, is just far better. Is it? Yeah. And, and my, your, your Warlord gets to reroll all hits and wounds? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, when we get to that, we'll take a look at it. But we got, uh, then we have the Relic, the, uh, I don't even know how to Beneficence. say it. Beneficence. Beneficence. So, Maul's equipped with a chainsword only. Relic replaces a chainsword, and it's basically plus two strength, AP minus two, damage one. Each time Bear fights, um, it makes three additional attacks with this weapon. And if there are six or more enemy models within three inches of the Bear, when it's selected to fight, it makes D3 plus three additional attacks. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, again, it's not bad. It's a great profile on what is essentially just a T3 uh, yeah. character. It used to be damage two, and it used to be just D three plus D three attacks. So you can make a chainsword cannoness, just be able to yeah, like, and she just yeet her up the board. Yeah, stack all those attacks. Maybe pop the tear them down mm -hmm. strategy on her, and away we go. 
Next we have the Order of the Ebon Chalice. So uh, these guys are your favorite, so I'll let you uh, take the lead on this. Right, so these this is the Order, the Order of the Ebon Chalice that all other orders are stacked up against. They are the paragons of what it means to be a sister. So inherently I really enjoy that, that kind of lineage, I guess you'd say. Mm. Uh, on the tabletop, these guys are utilitarian. I think they bring the most options to the board. You're not specked into fighting in the same way that Bloody Rose is, or you're not specked into the defensive that uh, Valorous Heart are. But the key takeaways here, with their order convictions, uh, when you're determining your sacred rights, uh, which is a rule we'll get to, they get to choose their sacred rights before the battle. Hmm. Every other order either gets to choose one or randomly roll two. So it's a lot easier for you to walk up to your opponent and really decide how you want your army to play. If you're up against psychers, you can spec into that a little bit and a little bit of shooting. You can spec into a little bit of melee uh, help there. Or you can go the martyr's route and, and make every unit that dies get a chance to do a mortal wound back. Uh, so that's, that's a huge one for me. Um, whenever we perform an act of faith, th this one's key. This is what I pulled from the previous book. Mm. Uh, if you listened previously, miracle dice are the key to how sisters really work, and you should be generating as many as you possibly can to get your damage through. Naturally, you're always going to have a one or a two sitting in your pile that you don't need. The Ebon Chalice, I can auto-generate a six by discarding one of those two. Right. So you can sacrifice one of the dice to make it an auto-six. Yeah. Which, when you look to make at the other dice, the auto six. Which, when you look at your uh, melted guns, or you look at your castigator battle tanks, or your exorcists, you're just guaranteeing that that damage is is nonstop and relentless. Yeah, that's big. To be able to control the game like that, cheating at dice as sisters do. Right, uh, cleansing flames. It's it's good. It's not something that I necessarily would spend on. This used to be a two CP strat to. Um, get max flame shots out of whatever flame weapon you were using. So it was great for immolation flamers. Uh, now you add four inches to all flame weapons that the units are equipped with. And on a four up to wound, uh, it's a mortal wound to a maximum of three. So it's still good. It's good damage output. Yeah, again, I can see that if you had a lot of flamers in your army, you're going to be popping that every, every turn. No. Well, I mean, it's also you're also adding four inches to the range of flame weapons. Um, so now we're sitting at sixteen inches, and that could really complement actually. Um, that could actually really complement popping certain stratagems like the Holy Trinity. Yes, and we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very interesting. Uh, Warlord traits terrible knowledge again. This is utilitarian. So at the beginning of every battle round, if you have selected this, your first miracle dice that you generate is automatically a six. Mm. So it just it's helpful to get that ball rolling for that alpha strike on a key unit, like a Grey Knight Dreadnought, Brett. <laughs> uh, and it's also the only Warlord trait where we can get some CP farming going. Right. So what's nice about this army as a whole, as a faction, is we don't rely on CP as other armies do. Ours are actually going into our stratagems. Our Miracle Dice is what we would use for our rerolls instead. Right. It's not always the case, but the you should be building and playing your army that way. This kind of takes that away as well, where you should be getting, you know, a command point, a, a turn, basically, or a phase. Mm. Battle round. That's the word. Uh, okay. the, the Annunciation of Creed is a new combi weapon. Um, well, it's not a new combi weapon. It's a um, Condemner bolt gun. Okay. Uh, which was made famous by Inquisitor Greyfax, Greyfax and now yeah. we have it in our army. And it didn't used to have two profiles, now it does have the two pro profiles, where we shoot a blessed stake at a psyker to do mortal wounds. <laughs> Try to hunt vampires. Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, it's, it's a fun utilitarian weapon. It's not why I take this order. I take this order for the utility and the miracle dice generation. So it's strength 4, AP minus 2, damage 2, flat, assault 1. But what's, what about the secondary build? So, or the secondary ability. So before selecting a target, select one of 
one or both of the profiles above. So that's, that's a combi ability, weapon. Yeah, that's the ability to fire both. And then each time an attack with this weapon, uh, with the weapon's blessed stake profile, is allocated to a psyker that model's unit, unit for Thousand Suns players and Grey Knight players, suffers three mortal wounds in addition to normal damage. Okay, that's interesting. And you can ignore lookouts or with it as well. Yep. Interesting little way to snipe characters out. Psychic characters, actually. Psychic characters, yeah. Very cool. I know you, uh, well, I mean, this is your favorite, so. Yeah, I'm not, I, I would never advocate painting an army as, you know, a, a standard color scheme unless you really are really into that particular order, and I, I think I just might. Oh, really? I yeah. think I really just you're, might. You're going to commit? They also have the classic black and white yeah. nun look. So. I'm personally a, f a big fan of doing that, too, having custom, but a custom paint scheme just for the fact that you... Uh, we get more flexibility. You just get more flexibility on the tabletop. And, I mean, with additions changing, you don't want to be uh, necessarily... Pigeonholed. I mean, unless you just really like the paint scheme, and then... Well, I have the Harlequins as my other cheating army. There you... <laughs> I like armies that ignore rules. Yeah. <laughs> So then we're moving on to the Argent Stroud. So um, these guys, uh, each time a unit with this conviction makes a normal move or advance in your movement phase, um, then until your, the end of your shooting phase, it counts as having remained stationary. So it's big for some uh, sisters toting heavy weapons, etc. Um, I mean, that's actually kind of nice to... Or advances. So it's really helpful with, advance, with the assault weapons as well. So this is where... Um a lot of the competitive scene is starting to look. They're starting to look at Argent Shroud right away. Yeah. Uh, and that's largely because the competitive scene for Sisters centered around highly points-efficient retributor units, which used to be able to move and fire without penalty. Right. They don't have that anymore. So this is one way to get that ability back into the retributors. Right. Scary. Faith is our shield. One command points. Oh, sorry, I missed the second part, didn't I? And yeah, each time the unit uh, with this conviction is selected to shoot or fight, you can re-roll one hit or wound roll when resolving that unit's attack. That's just stacks. Well, you, you know that's a yeah. hugely powerful it's ability. Very, very strong ability. Um, faith is our shield, one command points. Use this stratagem in uh, any phase when a Order of the Argent Shroud model from your army would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound until the end of the phase. Um, each time that model or any model in that unit would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound, roll a d6, and on a 4+, plus, that wound is not lost. Fancy way of saying 4+, plus moon shrug against mortal wounds. Well, this is very similar to Valorous Heart. And it's any phase. Right. That's, that's pretty Whereas cool. the Valorous Heart, it's built into yeah. them, this is a stratagem for it. So but again, it's also a 4+. Plus. Which is better than the 5-up. Yeah. But you're paying for it. But you're paying for it. One command point. Um, selfless Heroism. So this warlord is eligible to perform heroic intervention if it is within six inches horizontally, five inches vertically of an enemy unit instead of three inches uh, horizontally and five inches vertically. And each time this warlord makes a heroic intervention move, it can move up to six inches. You want to be space wolves, but you're not. No, we're not. <laughs> you can you can be an assault sisters army, and you can tool up a character to do it, but yeah. you're you're not an assault army inherently. Yeah. You need the support around you to get it done. Well, I mean, if you're trying to, like, have a crazy suicidal character, I guess, but then you're not probably taking this order. Anyways. Um, well, actually, sorry, Adam. Uh, yeah. There's a... We'll get into it when we cross that Rubicon. There's oh. stratagems that really favor that type of play with your characters that will okay. that'll help you generate miracle dice should they die. Yeah, for, uh, on, the, upon sacrifice. Upon sacrifice. And then there's a great one that uh, I wanted to use today in my game today. I didn't get a chance to, where you can declare that this character is a martyr, and okay. all attacks have to target that character. They can't target anything else. Oh, that's scary. So if you're trying to, say, protect your retributor squads from being assaulted, that's a really good way to do it. Mm. Nastiness. Um, the secondary part of this is also uh, units with engagement range of enemy units. It can fight first that phase, so... We're seeing a lot of that. That's uh, there's a lot of these rules that are kind of being I don't want to say copy and pasted, but they are. They're they're being we have universal rules without them admitting there's universal <laughs> yeah, rules. Exactly. Um, and then we have the quicksilver veil, and this is add three inches to the bearer's move characteristic each time that an attack uh, is made against the bearer. Subtract one from that attack's hit roll. 
The big takeaway from here is that this army is going to be incredibly mobile on the tabletop for, as a sister's army. It mm. won't be Eldar levels, but we're going to be bringing more heavy weapons to the fight, and they're going to be hitting mm -hmm. more accurately. Yeah. That flexibility is nice with your uh, with your heavy weapons. I mean, those are the things that you're relying on to do the majority of your damage to, to, to the stuff that's going to damage you. So... Um, Order of the Sacred Rose, Devote Serenity. Each time a combat attrition test is taken for a unit with this conviction, it automatically passed. Each time you use a Miracle Dice, um, when a model in this unit is, uh, sorry, with this conviction, performs an act of faith, roll a d6 on a 4+, plus, you gain one Miracle Dice. Wow. So this is actually my second favorite order. Because it just of, you're miracle just dice. bringing miracle dice yeah. to the table, and as when we hit the miracle dice rules, uh, it'll seem very limiting to how they can be used and how you can generate them. The rules within the units really help you get around that. It takes some smart unit planning and your points, but mm. th this unit will just this faction, this order will pump miracle dice out to you in a similar way that I can generate sixes with Evan Chalice. You'll probably just have them. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, the Emperor's Judgment, one command point. So use this strategy in your shooting phase. When an order of the Sacred Halt, or, or Sacred Rose, sorry, uh, unit from your army is selected to shoot until the end of the phase. Each time an attack is made with a ranged weapon by a model in this unit, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. So now we think we're Imperial Fists. That's pretty sweet, yeah. Uh, Warlord Trait, Light of the Divine. Um... Once per turn, when this warlord performs an act of faith, uh, one miracle dice used in an act of faith is considered to be a six, irrespective of its actual value. Very strong, especially with the amount of miracle dice you're going to have kicking around with these guys. And then the warlord has the following ability, Light of the Divine Aura, while friendly order of the Sacred Rose unit is within six inches of this warlord. If that core unit falls back, then it is still eligible to shoot this turn. It's pretty strong. Um... Relics, Light of St. Agnatha. Agnatha. Uh, model with a brazier of holy fire only. This relic replaces a, a brazier of holy fire. And it's 12 inch range, assault D6. Uh, each time an attack is made with this weapon, that attack automatically hits the target. An unmodified wound roll of four plus. Um, or 2 plus if the target contains any demon models. The target suffers one mortal wound uh, and the attack sequence ends. Pretty nasty way to put pump a whole bunch of mortal wounds on a demon character. So or this relic was in, was in the old book, but it was accessible to all orders right. at the time. And uh, I used that to put the final wounds into Magnus at right. the time. So it, it's... It has its place. A lot of people don't bring braziers of holy fire uh, previously, but don't discount them. Hmm. They're they're worth looking at, especially when you can do that. Well, if you're and especially if you're intending to, with the purpose of taking that relic. Yeah, this order really specializes in taking those mass blobs of sisters. Yeah, so combat tell, attrition yeah. is not a thing. Yeah, mass bolters. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then you have the Minoris Conviction. So, I mean, we're not going to go through every single one of these guys, but um, Josh, take me through some of the ones that stood out to you. So one of the big ones is there is a, uh, a Minoris Conviction in here that uh, lets your melta guns get back up to the levels they were in the previous book. Okay. Uh, and so a lot of, uh, again, the, the competitive scene, they're looking at that to see how they can maximize that. Uh, off the top of my head, I forget which one that is because I, I know which two I really like. So this one, Raging Fever. Each time a model of the conviction makes an attack with a melted weapon, the target of that attack is considered to be within half range for the purposes of that weapon's abilities. And that weapon has a pistol or assault type. That weapon has the heavy type. Um, and the target unit is within 18 inches of the firing model. Wow, so it's just extended range on the melt abilities or... Which is a callback to the stratagem for the retributors that they yeah, took away. That's very strong. I actually really like the rights of fire. Add four inches to the range of flame weapons. Um, I mean, if you, that's the way you were going, that's the direction you're going. Yeah. And with your flame weapons for some reason being better than everybody else's. Because we're pure. <laughs> and our fire is holy. Yeah. So it's, it's funny, that's actually not the one that I really Tell like. Tell that to the Slanesh worshippers <laughs> earlier. Uh, I really like um, 
uh, the belief one per pervid pervid <laughs> perverted <laughs> belief, perverted um, belief, which okay. is which is the ebon chalice ability. It lets me get those sixes when I need, and I and for me. And a lot of the army builds that I have, I, I bring heavy bolters in spades. Right. So being able to generate sixes when I want and then taking unshakable vengeance, which um, lets all of my bolt weapons ignore any and all hit or uh, ballistic skill modifiers. Right. It, it, it doubles down in spades. That If I was to do a custom order... Based on what's in my head, that that would be the. And I should I mention, going. you do get to choose two of these, although there are certain ones that don't stack together, um, as indicated. But uh, they, yeah, I mean, there's certain ones that you can't take this with another one, but um, you can still take another, substitute a different one, and yeah, basically mix and match to your heart's content. Um, there's some there's some cool stuff in here. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that the uh, the frameworks of the the that are in place for the, especially with the stratagem support, the relics and stuff like that of the other, the, the, um, Majoris there, you, you kind of want to, it's, it's hard to peel away from those it, it unless really you're is. really dedicating your army to that. Like you, for an example, if you were going the, the direction of uh, the raging fever, as you mentioned, you're going to have melters everywhere in your yeah. list. And that's, that's, you got to lean heavy into it. Yeah. All right, and now we're moving on to stratagems. So as far as stratagems are concerned, again, we're not going to mention every single one in here, but we are going to uh, pick and choose through some that are, uh, are standing out. We do have to talk. start off with Cleanse by Fire. Two command points. <laughs> Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when an Adeptus Ministorum unit from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of the phase when a model in that unit shoots with a flame weapon. Do not roll to determine the number of attacks made with that weapon. Instead... The maximum number of attacks are made with that weapon. Six attacks are made, for example, if it's a heavy D6. So the big one there, uh, for anyone wondering or paying attention, max penitent engine blob, two heavy flamers per engine. It's it's 64 automatic (laughs) shots with a strength six minus one. Oh, (laughs) For two (laughs) command points. So that's a thing. Um, Uh, Wow. This was this is one of my new favorite ones. Uh, this was the suffering and sacrifice. Okay. So use the stratagem in the fight phase. Select one Adeptus Sororitas Warlord Saint Potentia or Living Saint unit from your army, excluding vehicle units. Until the end of the phase, that unit is known as um, your suffering unit. Until the end of the phase, each time an enemy unit is selected to fight, if a model in that unit... Um, is within engagement range of the suffering unit when your opponent is selecting targets for those attacks uh, those attacks can only target the suffering unit very cool very sacrificial this is weird to me because as a or as a salamanders player there's a lot of like overlapping stratagems that i'm noticing here as far as uh stuff that we had and you know there's always going to be that debate between you and I as to who does flamers better. But, well, I do, obviously. You know, with, right with now, your, I With do. your better flamers now, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we also have, where was the other one that I wanted to talk about? Um, I think it was Exceptional Proficiency. Celestine unit from your army is selected to shoot or fight in the fight phase. When a Celestine uh, unit from your army is selected to fight until uh, the end of the phase, each time a model in that uh, unit makes an attack... Add one to the attack's hit roll. So plus one attack, or plus one hit. It's pretty good. So it's worth mentioning there's two types of Celestines. Yeah. There's the shooty kind, and then the fighty kind. Yeah. This stratagem works for both. but there's a, shoot or fight. But there's another stratagem that only works for the sacrosounds. Right. And that's the uh, shield wall stratagem. So you could s- technically stack them if you were worried about... If you are going into combat, you could stack yeah. those strats. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Fiery Oratory, one command point. Use this stratagem at the start of any of your phases other than your command phase. Select one Adeptus Minister and Priest model in your army that has not been, uh, not intoned a hymn this turn. That model can intone one hymn that is, um, that it knows, um, that has not already been intoned by a friendly model this turn. That hymn is automatically inspiring. Do not... Uh, roll takes effect until the start of the next command phase. So we're seeing this camp carried over from the um, Space Marine Codex with the ability to have your chaplains 
get on the table and then start preaching essentially. Right. So the issue, obviously, with um, having any of your characters that want to be using these hymns is if they're in a rhino or in a transport of some sort, they're not going to be able to be preaching um, because you have to do it. You can't be preaching while you're in the rhino, and you have to choose it at the start of the command phase. Command phase. So there, there's a few ways around this. It's not really ways around this, but unlike Space Marine chapters where they'll, they might have one chaplain, mm -hmm. there's a few that would benefit from two. So Black Templars, Grimaldus, and a Master of Sanctity. Yeah. You know, that's a great combo mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. Uh, the sisters are all about hymns and faith. There are a lot of characters in this book that you won't want in a transport because they have other abilities that make them useful, right. and they're a priest on top of it. Right. So the dialogist being one. She's a priest, so she can intone a hymn, but she also allows a unit that's performing an act of faith within her aura to increase or decrease the amount uh, of the miracle dice used by one. Right. Right. It's pretty strong. And it's also interesting to note a lot of the stratagems and, and gameplay in general, now that you know, Slay the Warlord isn't really a thing anymore, um, the sisters really reward your characters to get stuck in. Uh, martyrdom is a big thing that plays out. The, the suffering and sacrifice stratagem that I mentioned. Uh, oh, martyred, here we go. Yeah, yeah martyred right point. there. Use the stratagem when your miracle, you gain a miracle dice due to a sacrifice, you gain one additional miracle dice. If that model is destroyed, Deptosaurus, Warlord from your army, you instead gain D3 plus one additional miracle dice. And that ties into what you were saying earlier in regards to the, all the different ways that you can gain from sacrificing. Yeah, so don't don't be afraid with your characters in this. They want to die. Yeah. <laughs> Throw them up there, get them stuck in. And I'm sure your opponent will also happily oblige yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. Until they realize what they've done. Um. <laughs> uh, a, couple, a couple big changes. Uh, yeah. I guess it's worth noting. I've mentioned before the old Retributor stratagem. Well, that's gone now. Right. Sorry. Suck it up. Yeah. It, it just is. It is what it is. Uh, if you were one of the people who were rampantly playing that... Great. I hope you enjoyed it, but uh, it is no more. It is no more. Uh, and things that have changed: the rights of restoration. So, the hospitalier model, which is one of the greatest models ever, ever made, in my opinion. <laughs> it's pretty beautiful. Uh, our medic. She used to just be able to automatically heal a unit. Right. No roll, no nothing. She was better than an apothecary. She just got to heal, bring a model back to life, or heal one d three. Now that's a stratagem, and all she does is grant the six up feel no pain aura. Right. So if you want that healing, make sure you have the CP for it. Right. Uh, also worth noting, the exorcist stratagem has, I won't say they've taken it away, but it's, it doesn't exist in the same way. So previously, you got to re-roll any or all of the dice when determining the number of shots. Okay. That's gone. Now for two CP instead of one, it allows the exorcist to fire indirectly. And it, bumped, and it was bumped up to two CP instead of one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty... So, yeah, we... Uh, that's a nerf. We, we took some hits yeah. uh, in our heavy hitting units, for sure. Right. The but stuff that was getting borderline abused or... It was getting borderline standard. abused. Yeah. This is why we can't have nice things, guys. Yep. <laughs> and I, I did it, too, on request. <laughs> I, did, I did it. On request. Got to throw that caveat in. Yeah. Um, so then we also have... Uh, we do just have to mention these guys. These are the ones that we're seeing across the board in every codex sort of uh, coming in, which is the ability to give your characters extra relics, uh, an extra warlord trait, I think the saint in the making. Yep. Um, to be able to give an extra warlord trait. Um and to be able to give uh, your superiors um, um, relics as well. So there's a probably, I think there's a, yeah, there's a reduced list of stratagems that they can take, but... There's there, still some good ones in or, there. Uh, sorry, reduced list of relics, but yeah, there's still always going to be uh, some good little nasty combos and things that you're going to want to throw on. I mean, it's worth spending those command points pre-game. Now I find that uh, a lot of armies, you're, you just need, need to make sure that you're leaving yourself enough to still compete. Well, that's the great thing about the sisters, because they don't really need that right. with the miracle dice. Miracle dice helps with that a lot. You can be a little bit more aggressive. So a couple, one thing I wanted to mention, I was saving it for this. Yeah. Your, your bat people 
in the ad map? What are they called? <laughs> Taraxi. Yeah. What, what's their trick about coming in and coming out? <laughs> Jumping in the table. Well, wait for the FAQ on that, but there's the ability to come. Uh, basically, they can they they can jump back off the table um, at the end of phase. So. Angel consent. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give me a <laughs> Select one Adeptus Swordist jump pack unit from your army. Remove this unit from the battlefield. Um, this is at the start of your movement phase, though. Sorry. That's, and that's what they need to add. Sorry. Our, ours is how you <laughs> Yours should be. Yours is fixed. Be. <laughs> yeah, yours is fixed. But it is worth noting that... It will uh, be fixed. That's gonna, That's not going to survive the FAQ, which is probably going to be... Might, might even be out before this book... Uh, um, before this Codex review gets... On the internet. So. It's worth noting with that one in particular that our jump pack units are no longer just uh, Zephyrim and Seraphim. Right. They gave Celestine her jump pack back. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> this is one of my new favorite strats as well. So Defenders of the Faith, two command points. Yeah, so but you get a lot. Use the stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Select one Battle Sister squad from your unit from your army that is within range of an objective marker on the battlefield until the start of your next movement phase. Instead of following the normal rules for rapid fire weapons, models in this unit uh, shooting rapid fire bolt weapons. Uh, make double the number of attacks for the purpose of this stratagem. A rapid fire bolt weapon is any bolt weapon. I That's rapid fire. fire. With rapid fire. Go cool figure. They just they need to clarify that. Um, each time a, an attack is made with against a, this unit, an unmodified wound roll of 1 to 3 for the attack fails, irrespective of any abilities that that weapon... Um, Sorry, abilities that that weapon or the model making the attack may have. So this is where you were talking about babysitting an objective with a 20 blob of sisters. Four, Center board. Four, um, what are they called? Help me here. Storm bolters. Yeah, storm bolters. Four storm bolters in the unit and a 20 man squad. Two command points and just have fun. And uh, four up invuln if you're feeling cheeky about it. Yeah, and stack, yeah, keep stacking them up. Yeah, that's this is, this is great. Um, Holy Rage was interesting. One command point or two command points. So use the stratagem at the start of your charge phase. Select one Adeptus Sororitas core unit from your army. Until the start of your next command phase, this unit gains either the Zealot ability or the Fanatic ability, as shown below. Zealot, each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack. Uh, if this unit ha uh, made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention this turn, you can reroll the attack's hit roll. And then Fanatic, this unit is eligible to declare a charge in a turn in which it fell back. And I love the amount of fallback and charges we're seeing. We're seeing every army sort of getting the access to do something like that. And they frankly should be. A lot of the games and a lot of the armies, this is a quick sidebar. Yeah. Once they got locked in, there was nothing you could do about it. Yeah. And it felt really disheartening. A lot of the times, mm. I mean, if you got outplayed that way, you know, that that is what it is. But this gives you those options. And there's a lot of great stratagems like that for for those moments right. that'll help get you out of a sticky spot. And further to that, I, I would say that a lot of uh, Warhammer, previous editions especially, um, you felt very helpless in what you could do. Yeah, a lot of what we were seeing with um, with the with this edition is kind of removing the... Um, the need for players to feel like they were just at the their opponent's mercy during their turn. Now you have a lot of counter moves that you can make, which is uh, we're seeing with a lot of the stratagems and the just the the sheer flexibility of stratagems and armies and their ability to react. And it's um, stuff like this that makes me really hopeful for Harlequins later down the line. Yeah. Right now, if there's a rule, they probably break it. But now there's other armies that are coming in with. With abilities, these abilities to counter, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. There's just some really, really strong uh, stratagems across the board here. Now we have to talk about a few of these War Greer uh, stratagems. Well, one. <laughs> there's one least. that stands out. Uh, well, actually, there's two. I used one uh, today to zero effect, but against certain armies, it would just be just be excellent. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You want to talk about Holy Trinity? Yeah, Holy Trinity. So you didn't like this when I first read it to you in the last edition. Because you didn't like the idea of the being synergy. the synergy yeah. and having to be forced to build a unit a certain way. Yeah. Now? Well, I mean, one thing that's a big selling feature for me personally is the ability to um, synergize those ranges with some changes. There's also um, 
the ability to increase your ranges of certain weapons, example, your flamers. And now, and now also, flamers are also across the board universally 12 inches usually. We're looking at 12 inches minimum for most flamers. Yeah, when the old Holy Trinity was written, it was 8 inches. Yeah, and that's, to me, that really didn't, I didn't like that. I'm a big range synergy guy. For my units, I want my weapons, my special weapons, everything to be maximum, fi- like firing at maximum efficiency with the rest of the stuff in my army. This stands out to me as being so much more reliable now with 12-inch flamers. It absolutely is. And the, what's worth noting, because I didn't realize this for the longest time... I don't know if we've even read this stratagem yet. <laughs> you know what, read it, and then I'll mention it. <laughs> Use this stratagem in your shooting phase. When Adeptus Sororitas unit from your army is selected to shoot, select one eligible target for that unit within range of and visible to at least one model in the, enemy, or in the unit equipped with a bolt weapon. Uh, one unit, or sorry, one model equipped with a flame weapon and one model equipped with a melted weapon. So essentially you have to be in range of all three of the weapon types in the unit. And targeting the same. And targeting the same unit. But you have to have all three in that unit. But until the end of the phase, models in that unit can only make attacks that target the enemy unit. But each time... Uh, an attack is made with a bolt weapon, a flame weapon, or a melted weapon, add one to the attack's wound roll. So the part I'm excited about here, because I was slow on the uptake with its initial writing, combi weapons are the key to making this work. Oh yeah, for sure. And I, it didn't register for the longest time that there's a bolt gun also attached to the combi weapon, and it brings its special and weapon, with, both and you can fire both. Yeah. I don't know why I had the blank about it, but yeah. I did. So I mean, pending any FAQs, but I don't know why they would. Uh, I don't know why they would change that. Either way, you can see the ridiculousness you can get up to with this. For one command point, yep. this is going to be that strategy. You're 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 popping this every turn. Dominions retributors yeah. will benefit a lot from yeah. this, especially with sister squads going up to twenty models and every. Gun. Yeah. It's not just those special ones. It's every gun yeah. in that unit gets plus one to wound. Very strong. Plus one to wound on flamers that are already higher strength than your average flamers. Very good. Thrice blessed hull. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned earlier how this army hates demons and psychers. Thrice, thrice blessed hull. Use the stratagem at the start of your opponent's psychic phase. Select one hallowed model from your army. That's basically every one of our tanks. Okay. Um, immolators, great example. Until the end of that phase, that model gains the following ability. Thrice Blessed Hull Aura. When an enemy Psyker within 12 inches of this model, each time a Psychic test is taken and that test fails, it's an auto Perils of the Warp. Whew. So you just drive a Rhino or immolator full of whatever you want, or empty. Yeah, that's great. Deep. And it's almost like having a little mini Calexus. <laughs> because on top of this, you can also use it to deny psychic powers. Right. Yeah, that's pretty strong. And one CP. And one CP. So again, no reason when you're just spending miracle dice for everything else. And now that we've touched on uh, not all the stratagems, but the ones that uh, have, I mean, there's going to be more that are going to stand out as you start playtesting and there's messing around. There's other combinations with Zeraphim and Seraphim. Yeah. Sorry, Zephyrim. Zephyrim. And now we're moving on to the Blessings of the Faithful. So these are your, uh, if we were playing sp- Space Marines, this is your way of uh, upgrading your apothecary your chaplain and all these things these are ways of upgrading your canonists um i believe it's just canonists or palantine right yep. uh, model to give them uh, a little bit of a buff you can either spend the power level or points depending on what you're playing um and basically they have each one of these has two parts to it so you have your base uh, ability which is just going to be a persistent effect and then you have the miraculous ability portion of each one of these the miraculous ability portion is going to be sort of an aura or an ability that you proc Um, it's going to help buff other units nearby it can only be done once per game and in order to do it you have to basically use Miracle Dice yep. to determine the range. So we have a little chart here which um, value of the discarded Miracle Dice indicates the range of it. Obviously if you're discarding a one, it's one inch. Two to five, you're getting a three inch aura or, or sorry, ability range. And six, you're getting that 
precious six inches. So, yeah. So these are these are really great rules for uh, this army. It's really lore bunny-ish, if you will. Like th this is great for characters. Feeds it really the... feeds into it, and the idea that. Your character will get an extra whatever based on whatever you want, rapturous blows, word of the emperor. But then at some point in the battle, your character is visited by divine light and they just give you this game winning ability. It's not game winning, but it, they give you this super powerful ability. So you can a turn A lot off. of them, I've just reading through all of them, I gotta say that they're all good in one respect or another. There's a few that stand out as being very good. Um, what's your favorite if you had to pick one? Uh, my favorite right now is the Emperor's Grace, uh, partially because it's only 20 points. <laughs> it's a budget. <laughs> um, so let's talk about that one. At the start of your, each of your command phase, this model is healed and regains D3 lost wounds. Each model can only be healed once per turn. And then the miraculous ability on this, which is again when you, uh, when you decide to proc it. Um, while a friendly order core or order character unit um, is within miracle range of this model each time the attack is sorry each time an attack is made against that unit the opponent cannot reroll the hit roll wound roll or the damage roll very strong yeah kind of shuts it, down some auras and well what's key about this is that these abilities are miraculous abilities they're not auras yeah. mortarian's not shutting these down yeah as an example <laughs> yeah these are abilities. These are abilities. Yeah. Yep. And they don't actually say aura, so that's yeah. yeah it's very interesting. So right. again, an idea I was trying to do today. I didn't get the opportunity. Twenty right. man blob on an objective. We have a specific tactical objective that plays into us being able to hold a point. Yeah. This plus this stalwart defense stratagem. I forget what it was called off the top of my head. But increasing your involves. Um, and, or you could do that, yeah. but then you're only being wounded on one, twos, and threes, and that unit's protected from all rerolls. <laughs> you're DACA bots. Yeah. You think they could clear 20 sisters stacked up like that off an objective? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My old ones, maybe, but... <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I really, struggle. I really struggle. like that one. Yeah. Um, I like the Righteous Judgment one, so each time you select a target... Um, Sorry, so target for this model's ranged weapon. You could ignore the lookout, sir, rule. Each time that model makes a ranged attack or an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts uh, one mortal wound um, on the target in addition to any normal damage. So um, that's an unmodified wound roll. So, I mean, a flamer would be a kind of nice way to possibly throw in one, two mortal wounds in with this. Um, but, I mean, you're ignoring the lookout, sir, so you can really play into that and then the miraculous ability while friendly order core miraculous or sorry order character models within miracle range of the model each time that model makes a range attack the target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack so get an extra ap that way with cover being so prominent now all right and that is you're right that is absolutely great retributors already ignore cover yeah. So I don't really see. It depends. It depends what you want to try and do, what and certainly what you're shooting at. <laughs> and rapturous blows was the other one. I um, add one to the strength and damage characteristic of all melee weapons this model is equipped with, and then while friendly order core character uh, is within miracle range of this model, makes a melee attack an unmodified wound roll of six. That attack inflicts one mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. You can make a real beat stick cannon as they're balancing out of this, especially with some of the relics you can give them. Yeah. That's just terrifying on a unit with a high volume of attacks because there's no cap on it yet. Will there be? Who knows? We'll see. If there is, if that gets left untouched from the FAQ, that's going to be very strong. What I love about this page, uh, not just from you know a lore perspective on the tabletop, which is really why we all play this game at the yeah. end of the day. Um, I struggle at times building lists. I don't know if you do to to get those last few points in, and <laughs> I don't like wasted points. I don't like putting well, special weapons or whatever just because throwing an extra model on squad just because just because yeah. I, I want to make the most out of everything that gets on the tabletop, yeah. and this is a great way to do it. Yeah, it's very uh, potent way to buff up your uh, your stuff. All right, so then we're on to the warlord traits. So uh, we're gonna run through these pretty quick and then we'll just uh, spend a minute talking about them but uh, inspiring orator um, each time a warlord uh, intones a hymn 
or use an ability in the command phase that specifies a range, you can add three inches to the range of that him or ability. This does not affect the miracle range of any abilities. Um, so get that out of your head already. And uh, this Warlord um, has the following ability, Inspiring Orator. It's an aura. While a friendly order core unit is within six inches of this uh, Warlord, uh, the unit ignores the combat attrition penalty for being below half. So uh, half strength, so that's pretty strong. And then uh, Righteous Rage. So each time a Warlord makes a melee attack, you can reroll the hit roll and the uh, reroll the wound roll. Pretty strong. Um, Executioner of Heretics, this is an aura. While an enemy unit is within six inches of this warlord, subtract one from the leadership characteristic of models in that unit. Each time a combat attrition test is taken for that unit, subtract one from the combat attrition test. Beacon of Faith, you like this one, right? Mm -hmm. At the start of your command phase, if this warlord is on the battlefield, you gain one miracle dice. Uh, this miracle dice can only be used um, when your warlord performs an act of faith. Uh, or uses a mir miracle ability, uh, miraculous ability, sorry. And uh, if it's not used by the start of your next command phase, it's discarded. Um, this miracle dice can be used to perform an act of faith, even if another uh, unit from your army has already performed that act of faith. That's big. So that's what I was talking about earlier. There's way, even though you can only perform an act of faith once, once per, per phase, phase, there's yeah. ways to mitigate yeah. that. Yeah. Um, indomitable belief, uh, indomitable belief. So the Zenora, while friendly order core infantry unit is within six inches of the warlord, um, the invulnerable save of models in that unit received from Shield of Faith ability is improved to a maximum of four plus. Very strong. You're going to use that to stack up some serious defensive abilities. Get them up to that four plus. Uh, pure of will, this warlord can attempt to deny one additional psychic power in your opponent's psychic phase. Uh, as described in the Shield of Faith ability, add three inches to the night the witch tests taken for this warlord. So this army has no psychers, right? Yeah. But it's kind of you rely one of their you things. rely on some of those abilities to help you with your. So against psychic heavy armies, this army can struggle. It is an inherent weakness, but yeah. they've built things in like this to help mitigate that. Right, and they're like the invulnerable saves against or the. Um, Feel no pains against Feel no mortal pains wounds. Against mortal wounds, stuff uh, like that, yeah. All sisters units can deny. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're moving on to hymns of battle. So these are basically your litanies, uh, the, the sisters' version of litanies. Yeah, these are the things we sing in church. <laughs> so um, they do all, most of them come standard with the war hymn. And this hymn is inspiring. Select one friendly Adeptus Ministorum core, Adeptus Ministorum character, or engine of redemption unit within six inches of the priest model. Until the start of your next command phase, add one to the act hax characteristic of models in that unit. Pretty solid. There, there's a lot of them. And yeah. thankfully this book, uh, unlike a lot of the other abilities that stuff like this is generated from like space marine chaplains yeah we have so many priests on the battlefield yeah, you can, there's no yeah. reason you shouldn't just be hucking hymns you out should have people. yeah you should have the war bombs everywhere okay um but it only affects adeptus ministorum core right right which yeah. is everyone pretty much everything pretty much yeah with the exception because you're not affecting tanks Ad anything. adeptus sororitas carry two keywords yeah. right it's adep adeptus, adeptus sororitas, sororitas and ministorum and ministorum yeah um refrain from blazing piety um Okay, so in this, if this hymn is inspiring, select one enemy unit that is within 12 inches invisible to the priest model. This unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Um, if that unit has the chaos keyword, then it suffers three flat. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Uh, chorus of spiritual fortitude. If this hymn is inspiring, select one friendly Adeptus Ministorum core or Ministorum character or engine of redemption unit within six inches of the priest model. If that unit, um, sorry, if that unit or its models are being affected by any psychic powers manifested by enemy models, the effects of those psychic powers uh, are just end. That's sweet. So, again, psychic defense yeah. built into the book. And then until the start of your next command phase, that unit um, and models it contains are not affected by psych any psychic powers manifested. So, pretty strong. Um, you got to... I mean, you can pick these per game, so that's definitely something you might want to lean towards if you're going against the psychic... Well, right now, off the top of my head, uh, the big fear 
that I've always had when I build lists is how do I deal with Eldar's doom and guide nonsense. <laughs> Which we might see change. Which with the new book. we might see change, but right now... It's probably I probably going to be there. <laughs> with this, I don't care. Yeah. Not really, anyway. Yeah. Psalm of Righteous Smiting. Um, add one to the priest model's strength and attacks characteristics. So we've seen this... Uh, Chaplain's out Chaplain's, of Chaplain's, yeah. Um, but it's, it's great Improve the armor penetration of melee weapons this priest model is equipped with by one. And at the end at the end of the fight phase, if this priest model is in engagement range of the enemy unit, it can fight an additional time. So this is... You can build kind of a meme character with this where you just have this battle priest running around and there's a relic you can give him to, to make, make him, him great tanky I, I, it's not something I would personally take uh, but it's so it does say here that he gains one his strength and attacks but he won't gain if, if he's taking a relic um, he won't gain the additional uh, AP right? because it excludes relics but still you can, make some fun stick stuff. you can make some fun stuff. Litany, uh, Litany of Enduring Faith. So if this hymn is inspiring, select one friendly Adeptus Sororitas core, Adeptus Sororitas character unit within six inches of this priest model. Uh, the invulnerable save um, models in that unit receive from the Shield of Faith ability it is improved um, by one to a maximum of four plus. There's and that's there. how you get your four and up in And that's how you get your four plus. Uh, verse of holy piety um, if this hymn is inspiring select one friendly adeptosaurus core or uh, character unit within six inches of this priest model select one um, sacred rite that is not active for your army that sacred rite is active for the unit in addition to any others uh, that are active for your army pretty good um, there's some utility there for sure and then we have the uh, this one's good. Catechism of Repug Repugnance. Um, if this hymn is inspiring, select one sword is uh, core or sword is character unit within six inches. Got a bug on the page, Nurgle. Um, or Tyranids, I'm not sure. Um, within six inches of the priest, and each time a model in that unit makes a range attack with a bolt weapon. Uh, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically wounds the target. And if that attack targets a unit within half range, the armor penetration characteristic of that attack is improved by one. So, yeah. I tried. I tried my heart out. It didn't happen. But I tried to throw that on my 20 man blob today, 20 woman blob, plus the defensive strats right. we mentioned earlier, plus the offensive output. A few of those strats. Yeah, on a 20 man blob. On a 20, 20 woman. 20 woman blob. <laughs> uh, I didn't actually end up getting that uh, him yeah, off. Yeah, but you can already see the potential with it if you did get it off. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you could use always use that stratagem to guarantee yourself that. I was out of CP. I cried. That was the one time the miracle dice weren't going to help me out. Rocky move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on. <laughs> We're moving on to the relics. Now, again, we're not going to talk about every single one of these. We are just going to kind of skip through and talk about a few of them. Um, we're going to skip the ones that are kind of, uh, I'm not going to say not, not useful, just don't stand off the page. But um, we'll start off with the Blade of St. Eleanor. Um, model equipped with Blessed Blade only. This relic replaces a Blessed Blade and has the following profile. Plus two strength, AP minus three, three damage flat. Um, yeah, I mean... This this one's a bit weird because it used to be called the Blade of Admonition. Okay. And that's still in the book. It's a crusade relic with an identical profile. Oh, weird. But now it's also here, just under a different name. Hmm. But I mean, plus two is strength, AP minus three. I mean, yeah, you're dealing, three flat is solid. You're dealing with an army of strength three, toughness three characters, so it's anything you can do to help with that. Strength five, yeah. Damage three flat is always good. Uh, Brazier of Eternal Flame, um, model with Brazier of Holy Fire only. So we talked about this earlier. If you wanted to take a relic, um, specifying with that, each time an enemy demon model makes an attack against the bearer, subtract one from the attack's hit roll. The bearer gains the following ability: Eternal Flame Aura. While an enemy psychic uh, unit is within 18 inches of the bearer, each time a psychic test is taken for that unit contains um, that contains any double, that unit suffers perils of the warp. Solid. Yep. It's very similar to the other one. Yep. Um, 
Litanies of Faith is a classic Litanies one. Litanies of Faith, yeah, this one jumps out for sure. Adeptus Sororis models only. Uh, once per battle, the uh, the bearer is on the battlefield. Sorry, if the bearer is on the battlefield. Um, when you gain a miracle dice, you can reroll the dice before uh, adding it to your pool. So, very increase your chance of getting one of those higher dice rolls that you're going to want to sit on. Right. Or a one if you're, like, to be clear, a one will help auto pass morale. It will. Yeah. It really, two is your enemy. <laughs> two is your absolute enemy. The twos and threes, the average rules, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, I also like the Chaplet of Sacrifice. Uh, once, so, once per battle, if the bearer is selected to use an epic deed stratagem, excluding divine intervention, that stratagem costs zero CP. Yeah, you love those types of... Uh, I'm, I'm all about utility in my armies. Like saving you, on CPs and, and such. Yeah. And then each time the bearer makes an attack, you re-roll the hit roll. So, say, on a Palantine is the perfect candidate for mm. this. Something that's not already benefiting from that, but it's getting the wounds instead. Right. Uh, when the bearer is destroyed, do not remove that model from play. At the end of the phase, it can either shoot as if it were your shooting phase or fight as if it were the fight phase. After it is resolved, it is destroyed. Very decent. Yeah. Um, the relics are good. <laughs> Well, what is that? This is the weapon that uh, you can give the beat stick priest. Yeah, so it's a quick uh, model equipped with chainsword. Only the relic replaces chainsword's following a profile. Plus two strength, AP minus three, damage two. So that's the old uh, beneficence profile. Yeah. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, subtract one from the attack's hit roll and add one to the attack's wound roll. Interesting. Beat stick priest. Yeah. And I mean, he has zealot still, eh? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so... Pretty solid. Um, blessed, blessings of Sebastian Thor. So this is Adeptus Sororitas model only before you determine which sacred rites are active for your army. Select two sacred rites. Until the end of the battle, these sacred rites are active for the bearer's unit instead of those that are active for the rest of your army. And this is one of the ones that you can take on uh, your squad leaders. So um, definitely a beneficial one if you're going to spend a command point to buff up a unit. It's pretty, yep. pretty worthwhile. Um I think this one, Iron Surplice of St. Uh, Estelia, or Estelia. Um, so it's a Sorotus model only. Add one to the bearer's wounds characteristic. Each time an attack is made against this bearer, an unmodified wound roll, one of three of that attack fails irrespective of any abilities. Um, and the bearer has a save characteristic of two plus. Pretty solid defensive abilities there. Um... Oh, uh, the Book of St. Lucius, yeah, that's the classic. Three that's in almost, no, not almost. It is in every one of my army lists. So three inches additional range to bears or abilities to a maximum of 12 inches. Um, yeah, very strong. And moving on, and while we're getting into, uh, I mean, chapter approved rules, uh, Josh, do you want to tack tackle this really quick? Uh, what, what's your overall thoughts on these? They're not great. Yeah. They're... The inherent issues uh, I found today, because I tried to take a bunch of them uh, in, in today's game. Um, one forces you to spend miracle dice to get victory points. It's not always possible. Uh, you don't always have the miracle dice, especially early game. Right. So you're, you're kind of just bleeding uh, points at that, at that level. And I'm not a fan of bleeding points. Uh, the Battlefield Supremacy Defend the Shrine objective sounds great, and it can be great, but it uh, allows your opponent to dictate where your army's going to go, and mm -hmm. they have the ability to remove points from you. So how it works... So you lose a bit of the initiative on that. Right. So, at the, so if you select this secondary objective, after both sides have finished deploying, your opponent must select one objective marker on the battlefield, not within their own deployment zone to be a sacred shrine. If the only objective marker on the battlefield is in the enemy's deployment zone, this must be the sh sacred shrine. At the end of your turn, you score three victory points if you control it. At the end of the battle, you gain an additional three. Hmm. If your opponent takes it away from you, you subtract three. <laughs> and it's back and forth all turn. Okay. So it's a prime candidate to park a blob of sisters and just defend the point. But 
with your opponent dictating and the ability to remove points away from you, I'm not a, a, a huge, huge fan of it. Mm. Uh, purge the enemy. This sounds great. It's very thematic. Uh, so the heretic, yeah. Yeah. Um, at the end of each of your shooting phases, secure one victory point for each of the following that applies. So to get to the full three, you need to kill one unit with a bolt gun, you need to kill one unit with a flamer, and you need to kill one unit with... A melter gun. <laughs> I was going to mess with you and just say chainsaw, but... <laughs> I mean, that would be, you know... So if, if you can do it, uh, and you do all three, you get four victory points. Uh, okay. But, again, you're banking on units that maybe could have done it in the previous book, like Retributors, right? being able to do it now, and they don't necessarily have that ability to always reach out when, when you need them to. Right. Uh, Sacred Grounds just takes a character out of the fight, basically. And again, I'm not a fan of that with the hymns that we have to, to go around. That's not to say they're not impossible. I was scoring on A Leap of Faith, and I was scoring on Defend the Shrine. But I was being forced to do things that went against my army build, and I was handing my opponent choices. Right. Hmm. Well, I think that's kind of across the board. I've kind of noticed that through all the codexes so far that they're kind of like, they're, they're hit or miss. I mean, I like that secondaries are hard. Yeah. Uh, and I like that they're thematic. Yeah. But some of them are just, they're mean, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're moving on to Crusade rules. So we're not going to get too, too heavy into the Crusades. Um, I want you to summarize, because I know you love this Crusade. I love this. So um, there's, there's two big things I love about this. One, you can become a living saint, and it is as hard as it should be. There are, there are five trials. You can only complete one trial at a time, and you have to get ten points in each trial. Right. If you, you can switch trials halfway through a battle if you want, but if you do, you lose every point in the trial up to that point. Okay. If you successfully get all uh, ten points in a trial, you get the special saintly ability. So thematically, you're just getting holier. I also love how there's a mechanic for Crusade where if your Battle Sisters unit sustains some sort of dishonor from the wounds table, they can become Repentia. Oh, cool. And then there's another mechanic in the Crusade rules where the Repentia can be redeemed. through. So there's this great narrative aspect. Mm. Now, there's no way to make repentant mortifiers, but... <laughs> <laughs> Can't have everything. No, no, but, <laughs> but I think the, the, they, hit, they hit a really good nail on the head yeah. with, with balance. Because the, the living saint ability, that should be a pilgrimage. That should be hard. Because the, the buffs they give at the end of the day are, are pretty powerful. It's very thematic, though. That... And, and your character gets all of them throughout, throughout the, uh, their journey to being a living saint. Right. They just keep, they're progressive. They keep stacking. Right. Yeah, very cool. And then you were talking about some of the re relics that uh, carried over or whatever. No, there's the blade of the admonition. Blade of admonition. Yeah. yeah, the same place. Uh, you can't again. Crusade relics. There's not much to to say. They're great. They're thematic. They're always great. Yeah. Um, and then it goes into talking about like crusade armies. They just look so good as an army. Yeah. Everybody wants those updates and. Uh, they're, you they're guys not waited, coming fast enough. You guys waited a long time for those, though. Um, and then we're getting years. into the data sheet. So um, we did talk about uh, Acts of Faith a little bit previously, but uh, just uh, do us a kind of explain the, uh, the, the overall um, mechanic of Acts of Faith. So an Act of Faith is, you can look at it a little bit like the old Yunari out of turn sequence ability that they would get. Uh, an act of faith is how we spend miracle dice. Okay. And a unit, you can only spend one act of faith per phase of the game, and one unit can only spend do it once. So you can't do multiple uh, acts of faith on, on one unit. Uh, but in order to have an act of faith occur, you need miracle dice. And in order to generate miracle dice, you either go the vengeance route or the sacrifice route. So you're going to generate from two abilities, either Vengeance or Sacrifice, and all that means is Vengeance. You kill a unit in the shooting or fight phase, you get a Miracle Dice. If you 
one of your units dies in the shooting fight psychic phase, you get a miracle dice. Right. And that's, that's the only way to go. That's a bit of a nerf uh, previously, where we could get a miracle dice for passing a morale test on a one, where we could get a miracle dice for denying a psychic power using our shield of faith, which is uh, on the next sheet, I believe. Yep. No, sacred rights. Sacred rights, thanks. Yeah. Uh, but with the act of faith, they've also hashed out very clearly that these miracle dice can only be used for what's listed there. So you can exchange a miracle dice for an advance roll. Mm -hmm. You can exchange for a charge roll, a hit roll, a wound roll, a saving throw, a damage roll, or a miracle test. So nothing that involves a stratagem roll. Is that all? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Still very uh, potent. It, it it it's how the army functions. Yeah, it's how you get that spike damage. Mechanic, it, it's yeah. it's what it's what they do. Um, and there's there's examples of it how of how it works, but it, it's pretty easy to pick up and it's not cheesy. The key point to remember is even though you're generating these mac um, these miracle dice, you have to decide to use it before you roll. They're yeah, not a command a, reroll. That's a big factor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's no rolling your 2d6 charge, failing, and then deciding to, deciding to substitute the miracle dice. You have to decide ahead of time. Yeah, I'm using this to make it an auto six. Yeah, so and consider that your divine intervention. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's good. That, that, that limits it from being too good. I think that makes it a very interesting and useful mechanic, but it doesn't cross over into... And this is also why I favor army builds and orders that allow me to generate as many sixes as possible or as many miracle dice right. as possible. Right. Very, very cool. Very cool mechanic. And then we get into sacred rites. So this would be considered our doctrines, our marine doctrines yeah. kind of deal. Uh, so how it works is every order uh, gets to choose one or roll randomly for two. Uh, re-rolling duplicates until there's no duplicate. What sets Evan Chalice apart is they get to pick their two. Mm -hmm. So every time you walk up to an opponent at an event or your buddy, if you want to be cagey, you can tailor last second to them. Mm -hmm. And everything here gives a buff in some way to the army that's not groundbreakingly uh Dangerous. Yeah, let's go through them here. So we have Hand of the Emperor. While the Sacred Rite is active, add one to the advanced rolls and treasure rolls made for that unit. Strong. Bloody uh, Rose. Yeah. Spirit of the Martyr. Uh, while the Sacred Rite is active, each time a model in this unit is destroyed by a melee attack and does not explode, roll 1d6 on a 6. After the attacking model's unit has finished making its attack, it suffers one mortal wound. Uh, that's pretty strong. Um, you, know, you can suffer a maximum of six mortal wounds per phase as a result of this ability. Uh, while and then Aegis of the Emperor, while this unit or this sacred rite is active, each time a unit in this uh, uses the Shield of Faith ability uh, to take a deny the witch test, if the result of that test was an unmodified result of five plus, or if the um, it was greater than the result of the psychic test, that deny the witch test is passed. Again, there's your psychic uh, prevention. And then while this sacred right, uh, sorry, divine guidance, while the sacred right is active each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack, an unmodified wound roll of six, the arm penetration characteristic is improved by one. Very That's great. Good. Um, the passion, while this sacred right is active, each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one. Bloody Rose. Very good. Um, and Light of the Emperor, while this sacred rite is active, you can ignore all, uh, any or all modifiers to the unit's leadership characteristic. Um, and each time a combat attrition test is taken for this unit, you can ignore any and all modifiers. Great for those large blobs of sisters yeah. you start seeing. You can see the utility in them. I mean, they stand out pretty, pretty obviously. And we're going to flip back and uh, take a look because we totally forgot to talk about this. Skimmed right over it. We're just getting too excited. I was excited about Miracle Dice. <laughs> um, we got to talk about these two uh, sp specific rules for um, the uh, for units. On the, they have these keywords. Uh, so there's the Shield of Faith ability. So the Shield of Faith, uh, again, is a hugely important ability to the defensiveness of the sisters themselves. So the basic gist is sisters infantry units and tanks with this ability units with this ability inherently have a six up invul mm -hmm. uh in addition 
each one of those units can attempt to deny a psychic power as if they were a psyker. So it's just a straight deny with all the rules that apply, except you're doing it on one dice. Right. Which sounds impossible, and normally it would be, uh, except a roll of a six... Is an instant. Instant. Doesn't matter what, what it is. Yeah, which is strong. I mean, and you stack that with the sacred right for on fives and sixes, it's an auto deny. Yeah. And uh, in this instance, with that, uh, there's a stratagem on a four up auto deny psychic power. Black Templars have it, a few others have it. We can attempt to deny, fail, and still use that stratagem. Yeah. It's very good. Very, very good. Um, yeah, I mean, the utility, and as we were mentioning before, the lack of having psychers in the army doesn't necessarily hinder their ability to defend against psychic abilities. I mean, um, we'll see what happens with Grey Knights and Thousand Suns, but <laughs> yeah. I, I think we've got yeah. the tools. <laughs> um, then we also have the Zealot special rule. Um, each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack, if this unit made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention this turn, uh, you can re-roll the attack's hit roll. So that's going to be really strong, and you're going to see that throughout. Repentia, uh, Pandas and Engines, yeah. and there's a stratagem. You can just give it to someone if you need. And now we're moving on into the data sheets. Um, so we're not going to talk about every single data sheet. We're not going to talk about every single rule. Um, we're really just going to focus on um, the additions, the new units that were added, and then any major changes to unit composition or, uh, um, well, that's pretty much it, unit composition or, ch or rules um, and how they're kind of going to interact. So more involved, i, I got to say just flat out, first time I read, you, you sent me her statistics when uh, the book released and I... I was like staggering by the uh, the sheer like <laughs> she's an auto include. Yeah, at two hundred and sixty five points, there's no reason. Yeah, this is your this is your main character you're throwing in your army, and yeah, again, Cav no, caveat: expect her points to go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if. Um, when they do finally do a, a points overhaul for this book, down the road you will see her jump maybe sixty. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the main around sixty points. You're thinking a hundred. I think that would honestly be fair for what she gets. <laughs> and you'd still take her. I would I would still take her. So she's a uh, quick overview without going into too many details. You know, she's the old school buff vector that Gulliman was. Yeah. She provides a reroll to hit and wound of one. In the command phase, it's full rerolls to one unit. In melee, she gets the full rerolls thanks to her warlord trait. Mm -hmm. uh, she ignores mortal wounds uh, on a four up. She uh, has all damage coming in. Two up, four up. Yeah. I mean, and then the weapons, just even the weapon statistics on her. I mean. She's active in every phase. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, 36 inch range, heavy three, strength six, AP minus one, damage two flat. That's her uh, bolter, right? Heavy bolter? Yeah. And then she's got the Paragon missiles, and uh, these are 36 inch range both, but uh, two different profiles. Heavy 2d6 or heavy two, strength four, AP zero, and damage one, blast, or strength eight, AP minus two, damage six flat. And on top of it, she fights twice. And she fights twice. That lance is unreal. And it's sweeping blow, so it also has two different uh, um, attack profiles you can use. Um, you pick one, basically, it's either strength user, AP minus two, damage one, and each time an attack roll is made with this weapon, uh, roll two hits instead of one. And I mean, she's got base five attacks, and then it goes up from there as well. Yeah. So, pretty scary. Eight and wounds can't be targeted. You know, she is a vehicle, mind you. She's a vehicle, yeah. Um, lunging strike. Um, each time an attack is made with this weapon, I mean, it's strength, sorry, it's plus, um, plus three strength, AP minus three damage, three flat. Um, an unmodified wound roll, wound roll of six, um, target suffers one mortal wound in addition to additional damage or normal damage. Um, yeah, she's just a beat stick. I mean, four, yeah, like you said, four plus and vulnerable sage, save, um, yeah, she's got a four plus against mortal wounds. Having damage coming in. Two plus base save, yeah. So just... not not to give the game away, best way to take care of her is just the smallest bolt guns on mass, yeah, right? Just yeah. get them in there. Yeah. And but you gotta target her first. Or like strength five weapons with damage one or something like in that range. Yeah. 
I'm but or haywire or haywire <laughs> or haywire. Yeah, she is a vehicle. Remember that, guys. Remember that, all you ad Mac billiards. But yeah, no, um, she's. <laughs> But uh, she does have the Supreme Commander um, role, so just remember that um, as far as uh, um, synergies with your Supreme Command attachments. But uh, so there's some there's some flexibility there, um, and she does have to be a warlord. Yes, yeah, she does. But her warlord trait, while not uh, benefiting anyone else around her, is what gives her those full re rolls. And just remember that you can spend one command point and give another character a warlord trait. Yeah. So there's that ability. Uh, then we have the Cannoness. I mean, she's got that re roll, uh, the ones to hit. So she's like your typical. Um Yep, your yep. typical leader for what we're seeing across the board. Uh, the Palatine, that's... New character. Uh, yeah, it's basically, think lieutenant. of her as your your, your lieutenant or, um, I mean, for us, uh, for Admex, Katari Marshall or whatever. Um, she's re-rolling, uh, she's got the re-roll hit rolls of one, uh, or wound roll, sorry, of one. Um, now, what about Junith? How's she sitting right now? Junith, uh, she was in an odd place before. They've updated her and brought her in. She's the matriarch of... Uh, the Order of Our Martyred Lady. Yeah. Uh, she's basically just a cannoness, beefed up, uh, twin heavy flamer that only fires D6, but there's two of them on there. Uh, uh, her mm, mace... Get FAQ. Uh, her, her mace uh, got a bit of a buff. You know, you could do wrong you, taking other characters. Oh, no, so she says two Minister of Heavy Flamers. Oh. So she has she is equipped with two so, of them. So, so I, I, I screwed up because the Immolation Flamer is 2D6. One oh, flame, right? and okay. that, that's where my head is at. I'm always <laughs> so thinking, she does get the yeah, two, okay, two heavy d6, so that's good. You can tell how much attention I pay to her. <laughs> you were like, not my order, I don't care. Pretty much, <laughs> uh, you know, beautiful model though, on yeah. a little plinth. Uh, there's some neat conversions you can make of just her I that I've a, seen I around. I would do a head swap, but that's just me personally. Uh, a lot of these deserve a head swap. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing <laughs> great, GW. Throw, throw the helmet on, <laughs> <laughs> keep the helmet on. Uh, missionaries, um, these are your, basically your priests. Well, first priest, there's there's many others. Yeah, so you have other options, but this is... But uh, cheap AQ, HQ, yeah, and cheapest. there's that zealot, spe- uh, zealot special rule. Um, and then wild friendly adeptus ministorum core units within six inches of model models in the unit uh, can use his leadership characteristic, and he does have a leadership of eight. So he's a holy man. He's a holy man. Um, Celestine. Celestine, how's oh, she standing? She's doing great. Uh, doesn't give any uh, buffs to the army, which is weird because well, of previous editions. But but her buffs have gone through the roof now the gemini come with her i think she's sitting pretty at 200 points of an she still abs. does the six plus in Vaughn, though right to imperium yeah okay. yeah well yeah i mean we already have the shield of faith in this army and not too many people are souping anymore i was about to say soup is definitely not as prevalent uh she's got her jump pack back so she's keeping up and using the deep strike rules and and all, all, those, all that great stuff is which back. also means she can be targeted with that stratagem yes which is strong. So suddenly Celestine is in your back line with her two Gemini as bodyguards, and they have to And they are the, a single unit. They're a single and, unit. And they tank the wounds, right? They tank the wounds. And it's worth reading her uh, Healing Tears ability has changed. The Healing Tears? While a model in this unit has um, any lost wounds, or while this unit is below its starting strength, Celestine can att- uh, attempt the following action. Healing Tears. This unit can start its action at the end of your command phase. This action is completed at the end of your shooting phase, provided Celestine is still on the battlefield. Interesting. She should be at the end of your shooting phase. Um, once completed, if a model in this unit has lost any wounds, all of that model's lo- <laughs> lost wounds are restored. And if this unit is below starting strength, one Gemini superior model is returned to the unit, full wounds remaining. Yeah. And if you do kill her, she still has the on two up. She comes back at full health. Amazing. Uh, she's kind of where she should have been for her points level and what she did. Just that missile of. And she's, yeah, she's a, she's divine a, she's righteousness. A beast. Triumph of St. Catherine. So this used to be the linchpin of a lot of armies uh, because there was an FAQ a little while ago and it's now in the rules. Um, despite this model having 18 wounds, it counts as less than 10 for targeting purposes. Okay. So you would put this in a building or behind a line, well not in a building, but behind some sort of line of sight and just give aura buffs for days to your entire army. Uh, the Triumph represents each of the six major orders and an ability from each of them. Uh, they've altered somewhat. Uh, it's still an expensive model points-wise, so it, we'll see if uh, 
it ends up being a staple a competitive in, in choice, lots of armies. Yeah. Easily the best looking model, single model <laughs> in, in the You're army. In love with it. I am. I, I'm afraid to build it. <laughs> FRL Stern? FRL Stern, she got a buff. Uh, she's also pointed competitively now. Again, just a beat stick character. Yeah. Um, she has an undeniable smite as a shooting attack. Hmm. Not as a psychic ability. Uh, she has the zealot ability, so she's re-rolling wounds at her prodigious strength, which is strength four. Very interesting. Demonic infusion. <laughs> Possession. Interestingly, you well, right now you can't take the uh, Harlequin in a Harlequin army. You just they sit in the sisters' book for some reason. Interesting. We'll see if that changes. We'll see if that changes. Battle Sister Squad's definitely got to change. Yeah, so we got to talk about, uh, first of all, their unit composition. They are going from 5 to 20 uh, person, lady, squad. Nuns. <laughs> nuns. They're nuns. Nuns with guns. Um, they're going up to, yeah, so 20, 20 models is a big deal. Um, that definitely changes their um, the way that they play. Um I mean, we saw that. I saw that with uh, Adeptus Mechanicus and Skitari. Both those units went up to twenty-man squads, and um, yeah, it just they're also changing the uh, loadout or equipment options that you can take in the squad. Um, now these guys, you're basically getting one special weapon at anything under a ten-man squad. Um, at over a ten-man squad or at ten, ten men, you can take one special, one heavy, correct? Mm -hmm. And then. Um, Basically, for another 10 models, you can do that. So for each 10 models, you can have one heavy, one special. Uh, so you can end up with two heavies and two specials in a 20 minutes. Or squad. four specials. Or four specials. Sorry, yes. You can sub up the heavy options with a uh, an additional special weapon. So, so as pretty seen, good. Yeah, as you've seen from some of the stratums we talked about previously, some of the hymns, uh, there's a real argument for a brick of these sisters just holding your center board yeah. or your key objectives with nothing see, but storm bolters. I can see competitive lists having one like lichpin, a, a unit of 10 or of 20, and then a couple smaller squads just of some special weapons. And that's not even mentioned. The hospitalier that can just heal one back a turn if you yeah. really need them to hold on. Yeah, with a six up. Field Very cool pain. to see them, and they are your only trip choice in the list. This is an interesting character, and I can't wait to uh, to get them. I haven't done too much reading <laughs> into them, but basically, it's a, an, a special Imagifier character that gives its own buffs. Okay, uh, that are unique to it. Whether you're going to end up using it or not. That's really up to you and your your army composition. Right. Uh, or how many relics you want. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, the magic the crazy, It's crazy how many uh, elite choices you have in this book. Yes, I it thought, is. Uh, I thought the Space Wolf Codex was thick with uh, these, but... Well, most of them are characters. Yeah. Which, right. is, which is key. The Imagifier definitely got changed for you Valorous Heart fans. There's no more stacking your Ignore AP 1 and 2 buff. It's changed a bit. She's still viable, certainly in some lists. But even uh, in my lists towards the end of the last book, I wasn't really including an Imagifier anymore. Mm. Uh, it's just 45 points better spent elsewhere for right. what I was doing. Uh, dialogue just big buff. A lot of a lot of the characters you wouldn't have seen before got the buffs, and other characters changed. Then I won't really call it a nerf. She's she's a priest now, so she can do your hymns. She can affect your miracle dice. Great choice. She's got the one hymn, right? War hymn, and then one. Yep. Gets to pick one. Uh, Preacher is the same boat. I think he's got one and one. Yeah. Um, Cheapest character we have. Great for actions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if your army, a lot of these um, characters I should mention have, um, they do have the, the abilities like non militant order. If your army's Battle Forge, then for each uh, detachment that includes either a Canonist or a Canonist Superior unit, uh, you can have one uh, of this um, unit in the detachment without taking up an elite sort. So that's how they're allowing you, obviously, with the swell of elite choices that you guys have, uh, this is going to allow you to. Um, and bring the buffs them. they give you want those buffs. Bring you them, need those yeah, characters. And, and you're bringing them based on um, obviously your uh, what you already have in your army. Um, and, and same say, with the missionary. Yeah. So for each missionary, you can take a preacher as well. Yeah. And I'd say obviously the initial fear is I'm worried about assassinate as a secondary. 
This book loves assassinate. I get miracle dice for assassinate. I can resurrect characters with strategy. <laughs> yeah. Let's. You should have no fear of inserting the characters you need yeah. to get the buffs in this. this Go army. deep into the her hero hammer. Uh, slush in uh, squad. Uh, buffed up sister squad. Basically, that's the end of it. They can yeah. protect your characters. You're an elitist. Now this uh, sacrosins. So Celestian sacrosins. So. So there are Celestines. Uh, so they benefit from all the strats we mentioned before. They're a Lich Guard type unit. So mm, not as durable right. as Lich Guard, obviously. Not as strong as Lich Guard inherently. But they do have a boatload of attacks, a 4-up invul, and a 2-up armor save. There's two weapon options based on what you want. Uh, I've shown you some of the math behind... Uh, yeah, I think that. the uh, I, I think in my opinion the halberds definitely stood out. Those are your uh, yep. those are going to be your. Um, but I mean the the maces are too damaged too. No, the, the you really can't go wrong. I don't think it's yeah. just what you want to use them for, and they cost the same points too, whichever one you want to take. Yeah. It uh, depends on your the local meta. I think hallowed maces are going to be really good. Those are your marine killers. I yeah. think uh, special abilities. These ladies can heroically intervene. Uh, within yeah. characters, and again, they can protect characters from ranged attacks. And it says order character, so guess what? Yeah. Guess who's getting protected? I, I did that today. <laughs> <laughs> so Vol can be protected by these guys unless that gets FAQ'd and it says non-vehicle, but uh, yeah. until then. <laughs> and uh, so then you have your Hospitaller. Uh, yeah, lost her auto heal, but Gained it in a stratagem. And she does have that non militant order special rule as discussed earlier. Yep. Dogmata? Our chaplain, because apparently we need a dedicated chaplain. You in, sure did. In, uh, <laughs> all, all she is is exactly that. She is a chaplain. She casts hymns. Uh, she does have a great obsec ability yeah, for the, us. Uh, unit's performing action within six inches of the model. That unit can shoot without uh, the action failing. I think in, in our first game, you're definitely going to want to see the... Uh, That's Yeah, if you see a big blob, too, and yep. you, you've got her with them, and uh, you want them to be... Performing an action on this on a but you want to keep the shots pumping out. That's a huge role. That's a huge ability. Paragon war suits. All right, so uh, I'll leave this with you. So this is my bias. I love engines. <laughs> I think engines are great. I want to build an entire army around them. I have the list in my head. Uh, Paragons are not the be all and end all. They can be killed. Four aberrants killed one but aberrants are kind of trash right now. Right. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that'll change. They are beat sticks. Uh, they're just as durable, even though the profile looks different, as penitent engines and, and mortifiers. Okay. So they've got one less wound than those guys. They don't have the feel no pain. Uh, a key note here is that they reduce damage by one. The codex says... They just reduce damage by one with no minimum. Yeah. The GW app released the book with the <laughs> correct wording. They are not invincible. <laughs> they just reduce damage by one. Yeah. Uh, great set of loadouts. You can give them. If a, you are still running it as such, or if your opponent is running that as such, then uh, definitely tell them to look that up. And I mean, it's clearly. Not what was intended. They they copied and pasted from the book to put it in the uh, community article um, for the uh, the preview. And uh, unfortunately, typos do exist. Yep. Um, they do happen. I mean, these things are not just uh, getting put out the day before they're releasing it. Right? Mm -hmm. These are four months more. ahead. I think was the. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are. I do have to say, I I would like to see a little bit more editing. Or even putting out, like, um, just even putting out, like, releasing maybe a copy to the people that are helping write the rules so that they can go through it and, and call out these things a little earlier. I don't know if that's actually what's happening. I, I, I don't think it is because if you're, I mean, the avid rule players and people that are working on the rules are going to notice these things and kind of scream. I think... But this is a real quick cyber. There's a huge difference between rules as written and rules as intended. Tended, and in yeah. tournament play, you're going to find those people who are just going to hammer you rules as written. That was so obviously a rules oh, really? as intended issue that if 
no one should have played it yeah. that way. Yeah. And, and if you did, you should feel bad. <laughs> uh, but great weapon loadouts on these guys. I like the maces because in my head right now, with the way that Val is pointed, mm -hmm. they're, they're rolling around with her all yeah. day. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so their minus one to hit with the mace doesn't really matter when it's full rerolls on them, or rerolling ones. Or I could give them zealot for uh, some CP there. They're a pretty scary squad. Uh, heavy bolters, Ministorm, heavy flamers, multi meltas. What do you need done? Uh, the and flamer they don't go beyond three models, just so. No, you have to take them as three yeah. actually. Yeah, there's they're no just individual. Come into three squad. Um, Repentia Superior, she's buff vector. yeah, she's a buff vector. She's obviously dedicated. She's supposed to be running around with your uh, Repentia, sorry, and um, she also does not take up an elite slot if you have a unit of Repentia in your army. Speaking of Repentia, uh, sisters Repentia, they're still great. They really are. They're they're, they're glass chips. cannon. They're uh, glass cannon. There's now a stratagem yeah. where that glass cannon is mitigated a bit. Yeah. So now they fight on death if they haven't fought. So they're a little bit like. Our version of Wolfen with yeah. a seven up save. Yeah, so you get to fight if you haven't already fought after the model's been killed. You just don't remove the model and then finish your fight or swing with your attacks and then you remove the model. They're they're a great heat seeking missile. Bloody Rose gets yeah. the most mileage, obviously. Uh, Crusaders and Death Cult Assassins. Action characters. I've never really <laughs> leaned into them. I know people love Crusaders. Uh, the they, I think, I the think they loved them before when they were rocking the 3 plus and vulnerable, but yeah. now it's uh, and they, like I mean especially in um, Astro Militarum lists when you could just stack them and get them to like a 2 plus invuln. Now it's it's just not the same. They're not in the same spot. Small buff to Death Cult Assassins in their output, but again wouldn't be wasting slots taking these things up. No. Uh, Arco Flagellants, great lower strength, high output attack unit. There's really nothing is there. They have a dedicated strat to increase their attacks. So, so they might be a good target for that uh, mortal wounds on uh, sixes. I mean, there's a great argument to get a rhino, shove it full of these things, send it up, pop the hallowed hull thing so psychers are you know, exploding around you and then have them charge out of it the next turn. <laughs> Very cool. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Dominion squads. They got a buff. They're back to what they were. So in the previous book, they lost their scout move. So they were just special weapons units with nothing really special. Uh, old sisters battle squads could take the same number of... And we got to really talk about this because that Holy Vanguard special rule that he's referring to, um, at the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn begins, unit... Um, Basically, if they're in a transport, uh, the transport can make a scout move um, up the table. It cannot finish more than nine inches or within nine inches from an enemy unit. Um, but the crazy thing about this is that you can do it with a rhino. Yep. You can put a five-man squad on a rhino, and you can put something else in that rhino. Yep. And, and they, also go. Go, yeah, they also get to go up the table. So um, some shenanigans there. We'll see if that uh, makes it past any FAQs, but I think uh, that's a really strong Rhino Rush. Uh. The list in my head right now doesn't actually give Dominions any special weapons. I am just using that Vanguard ability in my emulators to get on those Taking objectives early. cheap as just sisters. And yeah, well, cheap. They're more expensive than regular sisters, but that Vanguard move lets the vehicles get out there, spread out a bit, or close in if I'm in trouble of line of sight, uh, get those objectives early, and then a big blob would basically be following uh, yeah, cool. to, to tighten it up. They're not troops, they're not obsec, but they're they're an instant in-your-face threat. And with these smaller board sizes, uh, with an immolator and a flamer that has an 18-inch range. Yikes. <laughs> Uh, Seraphim, Zephyrim? Uh, Seraphim, slight nerf, because they lost their stratagem support that increased the range of their pistols, so you can no longer deep strike with uh, four Inferno pistols and delete <laughs> something. I don't know why you would ever take them with anything but hand flamers for clear and chaff at this point, or actions, I mm -hmm. guess. I was never drawn to them as a unit, but uh, obviously Bloody Rose got a lot of mileage out of these guys. Yeah. Uh, There's going to be a lot of them kicking around still. Yeah, well, I've, I do have ten. Um, Zephyrim. These guys are great. Uh, they're armed with power swords, so they're strength four sisters with tank three damage and a lot of attacks. And they benefit from all the strats. Do they come with three attacks base, eh? 
Bloody Rose now for. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so these guys speak for themselves. Yeah, that's that's going to be very strong. Deep striking. I mean, two of them around with Celestine because the penitent. Um, Zephyrin Penitent allows reroll charge auras. So Zel- Celestine can get in with them, or another character, oh, wow. Beatstick, can get in with them. Very cool. Very strong. Uh, Retributor. Press F to pay respects. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you competitive players, it's great because you drive a lot of the hobby. You drive a lot of uh, the rules changes that come out. This is a case where it probably went a little too far. Mm. 125 points you used to be able to get uh, two multi melders in a squad with two, three ablative wounds, two cherubs. You burn the cherubs. It's as if four multi melters are firing downrange. Uh, and with one stratagem, it was uh, 36 inches, D6 plus one. Hmm. So at half range, D6 plus three. So what did the nerf bat do? Strat's gone. Yeah, stratum, stratagem's no more. Completely gone. Uh, they also used to ignore the penalties for moving and shooting. Right. They don't anymore. Now... now ignore uh, benefits of cover, right? Yep, which is good in its own right. It's so I'm, good, yeah. I'm looking at moving my multi melters into regular troop squads, to be honest with you. Right. Because there's really no difference, and the troops are going to be more up the board anyway. And I'm looking at putting heavy bolters in my retributors just for back range, constant streams just of strength five fire. Uh, yeah, mortifers. Also a bit of a nerf, but not a nerf so much as a balance. These things were nuts. Mm-hmm. Each one came with 15 strength six nate two <laughs> attacks. Each one of them. Yeah, that's unreal. Uh, they each came with two heavy bolters that you could make assault. So they could shoot and move and advance and shoot and... It, All the above. And then there's a strat for advance and char. It is just nuts. Uh, they don't have Zealot, but they have a better weapon skill, ballistic skill. They're hitting on threes and shooting on threes. That's pretty good. Um, what Mortifiers are, are Repentia who failed in their job. <laughs> so, you know, they're they're... They're great. You can give them flamers. You can give them saws. I was uh, going to say that's a really. This is a prime target for that uh, flamer stratagem to be able to maximize. Well, yeah. Oh, uh, as far as buffs, they used to have a six up feel no pain. Now it's a five up feel no pain mm. in line with penitent engines. They lost a point of movement, but penitent engines gained a point of movement. So they're all just kind of on the same stat on the line par, now. On par now. Uh, I, I love them. I still love them. I think they're great as counter assault units with those heavy bolters, just almost like gunboats circling around on the flanks. And then get them in when you have to. And then get them in when you're in trouble. And speaking of engines, penitent engines, they weren't doing so hot for me in the last uh, last book because mortifiers just did it better. <laughs> now they're more in line. They're more in line. Uh, they have zealot, so the fact they only hit on fours shouldn't scare anyone. Hmm. Uh, you're re-rolling that. The buzz saws are great. Uh, uh, their flamers are great. Eight. I mean, AP minus four, two damage flat. Yep. They have four attacks apiece. No, they're they're great. Uh, I'm, again, list in my head is just Paragon War Suits, Val, Penitent Engines, Mortifiers. And it goes up to attacks characteristic of five if you take two of the buzz saws. Yep. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I, don't, I honestly don't know why, really, they weren't just combined into one data sheet right. as a unit. Right. But there is a difference, a key difference for stratagems. Um, penitent engines, if you look and can see, they're Adeptus Minus Storm. Okay. Mortifiers retain the Adeptus, sorry, Adeptus Sororitas keyword. Okay. So mortifiers benefit from some strats there where penitents won't. Hmm. Penitents are ch- 10 points cheaper, though. Is it worth it, though? <laughs> Time will tell. I, I just want them all. <laughs> so the Exorcist... Another nerf bat. Uh, Time was... The Exorcist was our only real uh, battle tank artillery piece. And it was tough. It was T8. <laughs> you know, with 12 wounds. Now it's only T7 with 11. It's on a Rhino chassis. I mean, it... It should be. It should be. Yeah. Um, 
And I'm not I'm not so salty about that. I'm not even salty about losing a point of AP on the Exorcist missile launcher. Uh, it largely because we're getting the Castigator tank, which yeah. will help fill in that that, that role. role. Yeah. I do think that reducing the Exorcist that way and taking away their stratagem for rerolling any or all for the uh, number of shots mm. was a bit much. But they gave us a two P. Two CP strat to be able to let it fire in directly now. Right. So it still has a lot of utility. Are you going to see three in an army on the board? Probably not. No. Uh, now the Castigator, on the other hand, uh, replacing your uh, mainline battle tank here. <laughs> yeah, it's got a wicked profile on a Predator chassis. The uh, battle cannon, I mean, sanctified shell, 72 inches, heavy D6, strength 9, AP minus 3, 3 damage flat blast, or uh, the Pyro shell, 72 inches, heavy 3D3, strength 6, AP minus 1, damage 1, blast. Each time an attack is made with this weapon profile, the target does not receive the benefits of cover. Oh, and three heavy bolters. And three heavy bolters, which are damage too, remember. So. And shield of faith. And it's only 165 points. Yeah, it's pretty cheap. The exorcist is nearing 200. Yeah, they definitely want to sell some of those kits. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we can do another rant video at some point about how marine tack marines are being put to the side and they're just giving their sisters stuff to sisters. Yeah, they're getting all the uh, the, the love. Rhino, what's rhino, to say about we're the not going to talk too much. Immolators are just basically rhino with um, smaller... It's a Razorback, but yep. it, instead it's got uh, um, the Immolation Flamers, a heavy 2d6, yeah, strength A little six. pricey, lots of utility in the Immolator, yeah. though, so I'm not... And 18-inch Flamers, nothing to scoff at. No, especially on the smaller boards, right? Yeah. And 12-inch move, it's up there. You, it, with the Flamer, it can explode. You can put multi melters on it. It starts to get prohibitively expensive, or you can keep them cheap as chips and just give it three heavy bolters. Mm. You know, these things have a lot of output and a lot of utility, so don't just... Just chug shots. Uh, what, what do they say? The wave serpent's the best transport in the game. Yeah. With, with when it, what's its points? 125. The, I don't know where it's currently at right now, but it was around that. Yeah. This may not be on that level, but it's a contender. I I feel the 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 wave serpent's gone up and down over the years, but. And then we have the Battle Sanctum, which is just their uh, their train feature. So It also changed a little bit. Uh, nothing really worth noting, just in terms of how it generates Miracle Dice. That's changed a bit. I have one. I love it. But the way boards are now and the density of terrain, this is a massive, massive model. Yeah, it's a big piece. I'd love to be able to bring it to an event and say this is part of my army. I don't think I'd be able to fit it anywhere. <laughs> Take up half your display board. Well, unless you incorporate it into your display board. Mm -hmm. There we talked go. about that. We did talk about that. Weapon profiles, so it just goes through, it just explains, uh, we've seen this where they're just defining bolt weapons with flamer weapons, melt weapons. Um, nothing crazy to write home there. And then you just have your um, changes to any of your, um, basically any of your weapon profiles or anything that's in there. Obviously double check to make sure that something hasn't changed. And then points values, the new stre streamlined way of um, including your points. Um, which they've obviously made this a considerably um, easier task to do because you have your base points and then your upgrades and, and go. So that's really it. That is Codex Adeptus Sororitas, or Adepta Sororitas. I always got to throw that S on there. I think I've been doing that the whole time. But Battle Nuns. <laughs> um, overall thoughts? So there's been a lot of bemoaning. Uh, I'm a part of that Facebook group too. I've seen it. Uh, <laughs> I stopped reading it for days. Uh, Retributors took a hit, Exorcist took a hit, and that was a lot of the firepower. Uh, yeah. But, it, you know, it was obscene what those things were capable of doing at that right. point. It was being abused. It was absolutely being abused. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have a lot of players. That, that's inevitable, though. I find that whenever they make an addition change or a, 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 some key rules changes, they always target the units that are being maybe overused or overutilized. And then they try to give other units their chance to shine. And, I mean, they are a model company. Yeah. They are trying to sell kits. Uh, obviously, if they're putting out new kits, they're going to make those things pretty good, and they're going to make them stand out, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm bemoaning the Retributors, obviously, because they were, you know, just one of those greats. But, hey, I got Val now <laughs> <laughs> for, for however long I do. I think the key takeaway and the thing to remember is that the original book that was released a year ago really tailored to people who 
had had a sister's army for 20 plus years right. of old pewter. And everything that was in there was designed to be usable because that's all those unit that's all those players had. Right. The book you're seeing now is a more flushed out, much more well-rounded book. You will have to change your play style, but the core of how it plays is, is really the same. You're doing those acts of faith, you're getting those miracle die, the spike damage is still going through. They're they're a great army. Right. They really are. And they do take they do take thought. They're not Marines. They're not two wound marines. They're not even T four one wound one wound marines. They definitely have a unique play style, which is I mean, that's what we want to see. We want to see every single faction as they come out. We want to we want to have our individuality with our with our codexes and our armies. So, I um, definitely think these guys have it. Yeah, they they definitely are taking away from the uh, <laughs> <laughs> taking uh, bits and pieces away from the uh, the Marines, and uh, the Marines are getting kind of a different face. They're becoming this like very optimal tactical and they should be that's their job that, right they, that's how they that's the lore right but if you're into persecuting wars of faith and burning heretics we do it better check out codex adepta sororitis thanks for watching guys we hope you enjoyed the video and until next time burn the heretics purge <laughs> sponsored by <laughs> Join the Adeptus Sororitas. Click that subscribe button. Thanks, guys. Sisters of Battle, Adeptus Sororitas, nuns with guns. Yeah. Bing, bing, bing. Okay. Pick up Ken, sorry. Blame Brett. Hi, Ken.